the judge and jury, they all agree. If love's the crime, I'm doing time, and I don't look like I'll ever get free. Yeah, baby, you know I'm guilty. Baby, you know I'm guilty. While you're my Clyde, I'll be your Bonnie. I could pretend I'll be good again, but while loving you's the charge I'll never be. 'Cause baby, you know I'm guilty. And we are live. Welcome to the Digital Renegade Podcast. I'm your host, the Dashing Rogue, and I'm with my frequent sidekick, artistic layman. Uh, please stop reading that. It's flowery language is an insult to witches and driving away all our serious customers. Um, Ida? What customers? Oh, God. I just checked it. We had we went from five uh, five subscribers to, or five viewers to, like, one. Jeez. YouTube is harsh, man. No, but uh, in all honesty, we got three viewers coming in. That's good. Oh, that was a surprise. I know, right? But hey, you know, at least you had the proper music to add to it. For those of you who don't know, that was um for those of you who know who don't know, that was LA Noir's soundtrack that was uh dare I say uh, that was uh Guilty. There's a song that's included on the LA Noir soundtrack. I'd highly recommend you get that game if especially if you're like hard at reading facial and social cues. <laughs> uh, no, I, no, I'm serious. Like you will learn, you will learn by the numbers of, of who's lying and who isn't. Um, there's actually a wonderful uh, video uh, online by the Matt Pat. Uh, Matt Pat being the guy who um, he does game theory, I believe. All right. He uh, stated that um, that can you actually learn how to read people's language and, and what have you? Like how how true is Ellen Noir? It's pretty true. Granted, women are reversed. If you're left-handed, it. Uh, you know, people like all the things you would apply to the right hand are actually for the left hand, and women are harder to read, and that and that really is ultimately one of the biggest problems in uh, today. Because today we're talking about the Bonnie situation, we're talking about uh, the women situation at the end of the day. Because the biggest problem, um, this has been good. This video, we're going to get to it soon, but I've had to look at my own personal um, problems. At, that I've seen. Sorry about that. I've had a little bit of. I've been drinking a lot of this White Claw lately. Yeah, White Claw is pretty good. I like White Claw. I like it for what it is, personally. But um, what well, uh, what's up, DZ? Uh, welcome, Wolf Pre Wood and Prepper. And by the way, Wolf, we're gonna have you on. At I I'm gonna have a I guess a dialogue with you at some point uh, in the future. We'll have you on. I'd like you to uh, – I just have a bunch of questions I'm going to pick your mind at, honestly, when it comes to prepping and things like that. I heard there's a very bad um, firearm shortage right now. And right now, you know, I'm already sacrificing uh, I mean, uh, food money for ammunition money. Supply can't keep up with demand. I know. Yeah, exactly. So people are starting to search for different, like, odd rounds. But me, with my M1 carbine, we already got up to 250 rounds. And every time, every pack I get is like fifty rounds. And most, you know, M1 uh, or th uh, thirty out six is like twenty rounds. Like uh, AK rounds are like cheaper than than like the, like really at the end of the day, the AK people were correct. And you know, even Reno May, Reno May is a guy on YouTube. He's a really good guy. He's one of, I guess he's a younger gentleman who runs his own YouTube channel. He's in California, so I go subscribe to him if to support the 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 people behind enemy lines. If that makes any sense. But uh, yeah, so t so today, what are we going to talk about? Well, let's see what's on the schedule. Give me one second. But anyway, how was your weekend, Luke? I uh, heard it's, it. Yeah, it's basically mostly uneventful, but um, just trying to keep myself busy. That's good. That's good. I'm trying to get, keep myself busy as well, to be honest. <laughs> but what is? But what we're going to talk about first before we continue is, and I, I and I've. I have this problem, the same problem that uh, Meraku, because everyone's talking about Meraku. Everyone I know is talking about Meraku. Hell, my mom's talking about Meraku. Uh, yeah, I, I've only found out about it indirectly. So, what is Meraku exactly? I remember what? seeing his name somewhere before. Well, 
who it's not what is Mar well that's actually a very good question what is Meraku? Meraku is since you asked the question Meraku is a white nationalist for the TRS uh, the, the right stuff that oh. is, is he runs a thing called the Merchant Minute and you said what is Meraku? that was who is Meraku? Meraku hmm. is a white guy who's half Jewish and he's one of, of the white nationalists so you ask what is he that you have to be very careful I'm gonna be like a monkey's paw tonight because I have a little bit of the captain in me <laughs> but in any case i'm not drunk not yet we're getting there let's see wolf and pepper says i was at a gun show and they had guns and ammo all the vendors were were boomers who couldn't who couldn't internet Good. <laughs> okay you know that's fine by me i mean honestly at this day and age i think the internet's become a, a great tool but as like i say the world war <laughs> the millennials are the world war one generation we're learning the limits of what mechanics and engineering can do you know the, where yeah but the more i hear about all these uh people <laughs> acquiring weapons and the let and how the internet is talking about how the civil war is always covert that no one really talks about like how wars are actually fought i imagine this war will be very well well supplied oh, oh believe me you know again people are like why are you getting an m1 carbine it's so freaking weak i'm like dude i'm gonna kill a fucker and there'll be plenty of guns on the ground <laughs> You know, I don't mean to be a dick. I, I mean, here, you but... played video games before, right? <laughs> yeah, you just pick up the fucking enemy enemy kit. You know, it's it, it'll yeah, it'll be a little awkward. You'll be medic and you'll go to recon or something like that, but it'll all be good. But one of the things I wanted to talk about before we continue is uh, we're going to talk about a lot today. We got pretty interesting stuff. Yes, the world is burning, ladies and gentlemen. We all know that. I'm not really focusing right now on the news per se. Greetings, holy mystic. Um, but in all. Uh, but in reality, uh, as much as I want to say the world's burning, I'm not really paying attention to that. There are plenty of other people. Go subscribe to Andy No. Go subscribe to Tim Pool. I, there's only so many times I could say the world's burning. And only so many times you want to hear that the world's burning. So we're well, going to do something a bit to be, different. Although, although to be fair, only the blue sections of it are burning. <laughs> well, I actually, to tell you the truth, you know, um, my state is burning, but for all the ro the wrong reasons. It's still burning. It's just not a lot for the right reasons yeah, you not, might not, be thinking about. Yeah, but not arson, unfortunately. Well, it's not, well, we don't know how these fires started. We just think that there might have been a rainstorm or something. We don't actually know what how that took place. Oh, there's a lot of fun speculation about it, though, because just California being incompetent. Yep. Yep, California is very much uh, in my, my home state. I mean, California will always be my home state, but thank goodness I don't live there. Yep. So what is the definition of a Bonnie? You know, one of the things I noticed, and I had this problem too, because I, was, I wasn't I was dating a woman. I was talking to a girl over Instagram, and we were talking, and I already made it known from the very get-go I'm interested in her in, in like a you know intimate way. Uh, she didn't say anything. Until she said, um, until until she said, I didn't say anything because I didn't want to let you down. I I didn't know how to respond to that. And you know that's a fair argument. That's a fair point. But at the same time, ladies, you know, you have the right. If you have the right to own your own land, your own property, your own business, and you have a, you have all the rights to go fight in a war. At what point did, do I have to initiate and, and start reading your mind? So the definition, the top definition here for a Bonnie. Bonnie is a very beautiful and sweet woman in the world. It, it, Bonnie, Bonnie's are very beautiful and are very are the sweetest women in the world. Life without Bonnie is meaningless. There are they have <clears throat> they have the most loving pers personality, and every per every girl wants to be them. And any guy will be lucky enough to date them. Bonnie's are the most down to earth, very smart, funny, heart of gold, and they are the most envied so that's basically what that is this is from uh urban dictionary.com it's a top definition but yeah again oftentimes when i like again it's just another example for stacy and that's something that i noticed um the last the one thing i liked about my i don't want to call her my ex but let's just say my object of affection let's say she said some. She told me about the whole Jackie versus Marilyn thing. I have talked about this before on 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 my uh, podcast here and and, and uh, previous uh, shows. And one of the things that I've noticed about it is that the only time I've ever seen this be used is in Mad Men, the movie, the AMC show Mad Men. Remember that? Oh uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know why she's watching Mad Men, but this is but this little clip right here. I sent this. To, I saw. I found this online the other day. It's basically, um, I guess it's like the Breakfast Club. I, I sent you a link to it before, Luke. Also, where did I put that link? It's it's all it's all there in, in the chat, hopefully. But essentially, I'm noticing that the more and more there there's this this push back to fucking re regression back to high school. You know, these these archetypes did not exist. They only only existed in in high school. We had the traditional girl. We had the freaking you know, the little cum slut, the daddy's girl. We have the freaking strange one. We have the jock, and we have the freaking loner. I mean, these are archetypes that are similar to the nineteen eighties archetypes of of the Breakfast Club. And I and you know, even though we didn't, we me and this object of affection, let's say, um, we didn't. She said, no, no, this is not the new Breakfast Club. I said, it kind of is. The, the, it's the same archetype. I mean, you don't even have to play the freaking you know, new internet game. You could have just said rogue fighter, um, bard, and fucking cleric. I'll let you decide which one's the cleric. But, but be that as it may, I mean, it's basically the same five-man band type of archetypes that exist. And we apply to the internet. The problem here is the map is not the territory. You know, I have a little bit of the... of of the um of the captain of the football team in me i have a little bit of the nerd in me i have a little bit of everything i fit somewhere in between you know even the daddy's girl will have a little bit of that in me not to say that i have the same i act the same as them but i have that part of it. i have like it's like having the psychopath in you and that leads me to uh, i guess um Again, links in the description of what Jackie and Marilyn are. I'll go into that more often, but I want to talk more about something that I have personally seen uh, Matt Forney as well as uh, Beckloff talk about. Give me one second. Now let me link this to you, and I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna link this to you, and we're gonna watch this in real time. I have not seen the whole thing. I've seen a little bit of Forney's take, a little bit of uh, of uh, Beckloff's take, so I'm not gonna say anything per se. But I'm just gonna watch this and. Um, Beckloff tried to play sad music over this. Like he wanted to play the sad, the saddest uh, music or whatever. Sad violin. Uh, violin. Here we go. Play it, Luke. That's what we got. Well, I have not been looking forward to making this video. I uh, put it off for. Be before you, before all you, uh, just just to preface this, for those of you who don't know who this guy is. He is one of these white nationalists. These, um, uh, I should say, he's part of the right stuff. Dot, dot biz. He's a like Luke was saying what Meraki was, and because you ask what what not who, Meraki is a half Jewish guy who basically is working with the right stuff. Dot biz. He's a white nationalist, and uh, he runs the Merchant Minute. That's what he is. Who he is is he's well, he's the guy who runs the Merchant Minute, and he is a guy who got dumped by a girl who, I'll just say it. Um, the one thing he could he could probably take away from this whole um, this whole uh, white nationalist thing and this whole World War One thing because I keep referring to the millennial generation as the World War One generation, and one of the things that we that we all know died in, in the trenches of World War One was romanticism that died. Everyone like the notion that like the stuff that he's doing for these women in this you're going to realize I would have done. It sounds romantic, but here's the thing: men are the romantics, women are not. All of the romantic notions exist in the woman's head. We as men carry those out in the world. And I, I have a lot in common with this guy when it comes to the dynamics of women. So I wanted to, you know, you know, guys, just tell it to me, tell it to me straight, Doc. What's the condition? Is it terminal? Let's continue. Play it. Because it's it's just really hard to uh, really hard to talk about. It's unlisted, by the way. I'm glad I picked this up before. This this video is unlisted, so you got you have to link it. The link will be in the description. Uh, but yeah, keep playing. As you guys know, if you saw the previous video, um, I proposed to my girlfriend, and then I put that video up and publicized our wedding registry. And um, you guys were a lot more generous than I ever anticipated. I I have to say that, and that's why, that's part of why, it feels a lot worse. Because I feel like I've wronged you guys too. Like on top of everything, I feel like I've wronged you guys. Because five days after I proposed to her, um, he looks like Doctor Cox. Look it off. You ever notice that he looks like Doctor Cox from like uh, the Scrubs? Doesn't he? He looks like the same actor. I don't know, but keep playing. 
and uh, and left the state. It was like a a light switch was flipped or something. Like after I proposed to her. What's up? What's up, Luke? Oh, so that's it. He left. Yeah, yeah, he left. The, he, he left this. Supposedly, what happened was he left the state and he um, he went out to go see this girl, to seek this girl. Now, I'm of the opinion that if I had the right amount of money, I could go seek a girl if I want to. And this, and you know, in Silicon Valley, that that's just what you have to do to meet some of these women because some of these women, they're all taken, or they're degenerate, and you have nothing in common with them. They're feminists, they're ideologues, whatever it might be. I mean, you could technically take the degenerate, but that would take a lot of maintenance. Well, you know, Jesus hung out with whores and prostitutes and tax collectors. So, yeah, I mean, they didn't marry one. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you know. Not to not to sound like a heretic or anything, but the Da Vinci Code, they did say, oh, it is possible that Jesus had a wife, but it didn't necessarily mean that he got laid, you know? <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, you know, the, the notion of him whoring, marrying a whore like Mary Magdalene uh, is very freaking, you know, provocative. But fucking Mary Magdalene, a common discount whore, that's something totally different. Of course, that raises, raises the question, why would you say Jesus – you could have a family if you knew he was going to die on the cross. Don't you think it's a little inappropriate? Uh, carnal desires? I don't fucking know. I don't know. But all I know is that it's a little inappropriate. I mean, you know, born to die, kind of. It's sort of like a Lon Del Rey song. But go ahead, play it. The, the day after, you know, she was having some emotional problems. And it just got worse and worse. And uh, after she left, I, I blocked her on everything. Um, you're you're more of a man than I am. Welcome, you know, media hits. Trying, pleading with them to come back and not leave it doesn't really do anything it doesn't help you at all it just it just makes you lose all your remaining dignity and i yeah i i wanted to improve on past behavior in that regard because with my uh girlfriend before her yeah i shredded my fucking dignity trying to get her back it doesn't really you want to play along just... there you go it's an hour violin session For those that's of you... one less little thing that i can beat myself up over you know what i mean but i um I really loved this girl, and I really wanted to be with her forever. I, I really liked the life that we built together. You know, and it was just starting out. And well, let me just say this place. before we continue. I'm of the opinion that, you know, I, I, what I've, from what I understand is he put, he put this shit on blast, and no woman wants to feel cornered into it, okay? If he was just, you know, being casual about it, that could have been awesome. Even, um, but from what I understand, he put everything out on the internet. He basically was kind of peer pressuring her. That's what I've what I got away from what I've got from this. Now, some of the stuff he did sounds absolutely romantic. I would have committed that crime. Now, I would have done the same thing. Here's the problem, though. You know, a media hit says, "Oh boy, you're playing this too." Yes, I am playing this too because I have a lot in common with this man. Don't care. Don't have any empathy for him. I don't have any empathy for him. Well. Let me just say this. I don't have empathy for him per se, but I've been in his shoes, and I and I feel like I'm walking in his shoes. So there's a certain level of should I be scared about this? Should I be terrified? Should I, you know, be you know scared? Am I doing the right thing? Am I going to diverge, or am I going to go down the same path and go to the same fucking, you know, go to the go to the freaking death squads like he did, you know? Uh, Wolfwind Pepper says we already know she wasn't stable. She was dating a half. A half nose wig nat. Um, I, I I don't know if she, I don't I don't know what to say to that. I mean, honestly, at this day and age, guys, just just you're not gonna find anything. Uh, I personally like hapas. I like hapas and I like um, redheads. You know, maybe called the whole whole Genghis Khan route. I don't fucking know. But uh, that's just me. Um, I also like I also like. Uh, Blondes and blue eyes and, and uh, raven-haired girls and, and with blue eyes. I think that's very cute. I don't see enough of those girls out as of late. Uh, she was in the wing that scene, according to uh, Media Hit says, she was in the wing that scene much like any other non, uh, non-mainstream church with women that only mem- married members. She picked the alpha Chad and you were the beta, I guess. Why are we looking at Sailor Mars? I'm picking up waifus we might like. As long as long we're on the subject. Okay. Okay. No, no. Put it right next to him. Put it right next to him. <laughs> Fucking. I don't know why everyone likes like Sailor Mars. What the fuck? 
I, I mean, I never thought she was anything special, to be honest. But I will say this, and and um, the notion of um, of you know, whether it be Jackie versus Marilyn or Tris versus Yennefer or Betty versus Veronica, it, it's it's you do know you gals, you do know that a lot of these things were sold to you by men in a shady room, right? They they were they were sold to you in that regard. There we go. Now that's going to be the caption. <laughs> Luke. All right, just keep playing. Just keep playing. <laughs> and I'm not saying that like a good thing because after she left and, and took all the things, all the little things she bought to make it feel like a home. Well, it didn't feel like a fucking home anymore. It, um, it almost feels like a fucking cage. I upended my life for this girl. Um, That's your first mistake. I'm trying to do the bit. Do the That's bit. your first mistake. Provide buddy. for a wife and family. I fuck. I want to fucking. I want to provide for a wife and family. Like that is that is that is a very deep seated instinct of mine it is and um pause it for a second yeah it's not happening I... yeah um let me just say this i want that as well i i really do like this is where i sort of had feels for the guy because you know i i try my hardest i don't like doing my job i hate my job i despise my job i hate work okay the reason i take stem is because it pays money so i can have a kid the problem is that we live in a multicultural society and because, and I'm not saying that to be multiracial. That doesn't mean multiracial. It means that people have different ideas of what you do when you're at this certain age, that certain age. This, you know, when do you get married? When do you not get married? You know, things like that. Anyhow, keep playing. I, I don't know. I like I said, I blocked her on everything, but I people do tell me some things, and the things people tell me, it's I feel like I'm being gaslit. People fucking telling me. Um, things that are being perceived about me that I just, I don't, I don't think are true. And it's like, is that, is that what I am? Like, you think, you think I was just fucking using you? Like a, some fucking PUA using fucking tricks to get a woman in bed or something? Like what, what? Let me say this about, I about I was doing pause it, pause it for a second, pause it for a second. Let me say this about the PUA thing. Yes, you are tricking people to get into bed. That, that much is true. Okay. You are. And then that's what that is. But here's, but again, most Almost all women nowadays, and this is true for men as well, are byproducts of people you've never met. To quote, you know, to paraphrase um, from uh, what's his name, Edward Bernays, most of the ideas you have of why you like certain things is sophistry, and it is basically lies. Okay, a lot of it is lies. You know, you know, women smoking. The whole how to get women smoking, right? The whole reason why uh, women started smoke, how they sold uh, cigarettes to women was their freedom torches. You're an independent woman now. You can smoke just like the man. Um, at the same freaking time, uh, you know, there are um, women. Women got a, you know, the whole reason why women were emancipated and allowed to you know work was there were multiple factors. It wasn't just because it's we want equality. We want people to be treated the same. We also wanted to double our labor pool. So there are multiple angles behind this, but a lot of it is how do we sell this to people? How do we sell the notion of, of birth control? How do we sell the notion of psychedelics? How do we sell the notion that you know one man, one family, you know one one man, one woman? How do we sell that? So the, so you know think of it like this: if you don't want to be a manip manipulator, just know that these women have all been manipulated, and it's part of the game. Adapt and keep in mind this guy's a Nazi. This guy's a motherfucking Nazi. So don't be the idealistic Nazi. Be the fucking Hollywood Nazi and just go for it. Like I'm, I'm a dashing rogue. I don't give a fuck about women. Fuck women's feelings. They don't care about my feelings. I don't care about their feelings. As simple as that. This is equality now. Move on. Play, and uh, since you decided to put, put some waifus up, I figured I'd put some my own waifus. And it turns out I got a picture of the piece of ass that fucking stole my fucking guns. Fuck her. Pirate. Pirate bitch. I was trying to love my wife to be, and and give her every material comfort she could possibly desire within my ability, and and I wanted a family with her, and now it's like I'm some fucking evil bastard, and I man I don't fucking get it. I uh, it's been how long has it been? It's been over three weeks now, and um, I still have a lot of trouble eating, which yeah it's like I, I, I did how long have you known her? Time, and I was hoping that would help with how, that, uh, that. That's the real question. That's the pirate chick who fucking stole my guns, bastard bitch. <sighs> well, if someone has to steal them, might as well be her. 
You might, yeah, you know, let's be frank. It's, you know, she, I didn't need it anyway. She needed it more than me because Lord knows someone would love to take advantage of that, the, of that ass. <laughs> but Pete has a name. But like, all honesty, uh, you, I want to punch this guy. Yeah, I, I, I honestly keep hearing, like, Forney said that he's annoying. Pete, Forney has said that the guy is basically has the deer in the headlights look. I think he looks like Dr. Cox from, uh, from, uh, what was it? The, um, Scrubs. Scrubs, yeah, he looks like him. If you could pull him up for a second, and you'll see him pop up a little bit. Uh, keep playing, Luke. It hasn't, and so I'm probably just spinning my wheels with this thing because I can't eat enough, and I don't sleep well anymore. Um, I'm really fucking sorry, you guys. Like, you, you guys really, really fucking came through for me, and I was so happy. And I can make a lot of use of those wedding gifts, but like, I'm, I'm fucking sorry, guys. Hey, you should I probably give like it back. Over. You should probably no seriously. You should probably give him back, because the Lord knows. And again, I'm not going to run defense for the Nazis or anything, but I'll tell you this: you know, wedding wedding registration uh, fraud is a very big crime. Don't do that. Uh, there we go. And keep playing. And he's not. And Doctor Cox is is true wife waifu material. Okay, just just put that out there. Keep playing. If this is what happens to me when I when I try to I try to do the bit, what is the fucking point? She wrote a five page letter. Laying out all my flaws. Okay, red flag right punch. there. Um, no woman fucking writes writes five page letters. No woman does. Okay, no woman fucking writes writes five page letters. You are dealing with somebody who is either unstable, avant garde, and given it's the alt right, given it's the wingnat circle, she probably is avant garde and probably unstable. But keep playing. And it was a lot of it was stuff she already knew about, you know, um, because. Mutual friends of ours had who set us up uh, had, had vetted me to make sure I uh, to quote them to make sure I'm not a Heimbach. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of the a lot of the major stuff, uh, you know, that was that was there was no major shit that was wrong with me. Uh, otherwise, this relationship wouldn't have happened in the first place. But um, yep. well, basically, uh, well, from you the know, five-page letter, like I, I <laughs> my fucking flaws are like my diet is like standard American and really like. Shit tier, yeah. I, I have a weird palate, and and my diet is not the best. Uh, that's kind of why it's kind of one of the reasons a, a wife would be a huge improvement for me. Yeah, um, pause right there. That's something I have a problem with as well. I have the same issue. I personally would like a wife simply to help with the load that I'm already taking on. Okay, I don't cook my own meals. I can, but I don't. And the reason I don't is because I'm working my ass off. Okay, I'm working like a fucking whore practically. And yes, helping having someone help with, you know, cooking the dinner when I get home would be very useful. It would probably help my mental health very much, in fact. But when you're tired, you don't want to eat. That's what fucking, you know, uh, hungry man, XXL, uh, you know, lean cuisine, whatever it might be, TV dinners. Okay, that's what they're there for. Okay, I, they're not healthy, but if you're hungry, you, you don't get you get to what you get. Okay, but that does affect your health. So there is a certain level of uh, a trade-off here. Keep playing. It was 5.30 in the morning, and you had rambled on for 18 pages. <laughs> Front and back! That actually is a good, that is, that is a good question. Was the, like, was the five pages she gave him uh, back and forth, front and back? Or was it just like, you know, was it double spaced? I kind of want to know the details right, at this point. You know, like a huge improvement for my quality of life. That's one of the reasons. And another thing was that my mom, I guess she was too involved, uh, too overbearing, as she put it. And my mom, dude, my mom, this pissed me off so much because it was two paragraphs shitting on my mom. And my mom, I know she's overbearing. I know she's overprotective. But she, oh. she, she was a dream of a mother-in-law. And how, she always uh, wanted to help my girl. How old are you? Like, cause I'm hearing this guy's like 30 going to college. I'm going to college in thirties. Cause I'll tell you this, you know, and this is, this is some news here. Apparently Trump is going to, you know, get rid of critical thinking or critical. Not, yeah. <laughs> 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 that, was, that was a Freudian slip. Um, He's going to get rid of fucking critical theory and, and, um, uh, all these like feminists and anti-racist shit. He's going to get rid of all 1619 projects gone and white fragility in the workplace gone for federal workers. Pra yep. Praise and, be to God. <laughs> yeah, praise be to God, man. To be in all honesty, this is awesome. But in reality, the situation here is that I'm the, going going to college in your 30s is going to be the norm now because nobody wants to fucking you know fiddle around in their 20s without knowing what the fuck they want to do. I 
already know that I hate work. I hate class. I hate, you know, doing things. I hate computers. I, you know, I've oftentimes said, when people ask me, what do you want to do? I want to have the Genghis Khan lifestyle. I want to have a bunch of fucking AK 47s, you know, a bunch of ammunition, uh, you know, a whole fucking harem of women and, and like Victoria's Secret models. I want to drive fast cars and I want to be able to, to do snort cocaine and do all sorts of drugs. That's what I want to do. I can't do it though, at least not without money. And even then, as a, as a Catholic, I'm not allowed. That's all sinful shit. But what I want to do and what I should be should want to do are two different things. And one of the things I know that I, for certain that's a constant variable within my um, uh, well, it's it's a constant variable within every plan I have. I need money, and to, and if I have to just shut the fuck up and go into college, that's what I have to do. So keep playing, friend, and. Uh... I guess there was some some time I made a, a joke about like maybe I should do pickup artist tactics or something. I mean some fucking See, joke like that. Doctor Cox. And it was it was it's Doctor fucking Cox. So it this, is. It's fucking Doctor Cox. So so now we know what Doctor Cox did after that uh, after a platoon. Fuck it all makes sense. It all looks, it makes sense with the whole fucking Nazi flag in Vietnam. Yeah. Definitely a joke because like that's that sort of thing is not in my nature. Like I couldn't do the PUA shit if I wanted to. Uh, it's just not me. I don't You're want, a Nazi, don't bro. A relationship where Go watch Elsa, She Wolf of the SS and take notes. Where I have to, where I have to constantly play mental games with a girl and, and manipulate the shit out of her. I just want to be straight with you. I, you know, I just want to be, I just want to be fucking honest with you. It's so much easier. It's so much less effort for me to just fucking be honest with you. But like, I guess. <laughs> I really don't understand this desire to. I mean, I know this is kind of what YouTube people do. They have to explain themselves and it, like to kill their audiences. What's up with them? But why do you need to? It's just because. I mean, yeah, you the girlfriend you asked out or wanted to marry walked out on you. I mean, well, first off, let me just say this, and and this is actually an improvement. It is unlisted. Before it wasn't listed, and... so a lot of this stuff. Like again, I, I I hate to say it, but guys. You know the, the 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 notion that we are not uh, that we are not romantic. This is romanticism, and you know the sad part here is that this guy, for all the you know, he idolizes Hitler, he idolizes the Nazis, whatever. Romanticism died during World War One. I've I've died to the notion of romantic partner. Like I you know, I've been called now. Granted, I've moved slowly away from that to the point where I'm on the other end, where I, I've been accused of seeing women as broodmares. Okay, I didn't even know what the fuck a broodmare was. I'd look that shit up. Apparently, it's like a a breeding fucking uh, a breeding uh, horse or something. <laughs> I see where I got that apparently, but I'll tell you this: um, not all, we're in a multicultural society, and some men see that way, and some women see that. Some w women see men that way. As just sperm donors, so who's right, who's wrong, right? You know, I, I, I'm going to say it. You know, I'm going to recommend game, and if you, and I'm going to recommend a few books for game because we're halfway through this, and I figured let's take a fucking break and shill some products. So, books for recommend for dating, anything by Rushvi, and it's not on. It's some of his stuff is no longer on Amazon because, let's be frank, he had a you know come to Jesus moment. I don't know how long that will actually work. I have Bang and I have Day Bang. Those are the two books I have of his. I also have, I believe, uh, I think 25 Days, 25 Banks or something like that. I also um, – I, I have The Catholic Red Pill. That's one of the books I have, which again, for those of you who want to you know, uh, actually go into and try to be within the, the, the spirit and the letter of the law of the Catholic Church, the rules of standing of the Catholic Church, I'd recommend that. But for those of you who want to be dicks and assholes and fucking – and you know, who have that magical thinking property – I actually have this as well. It's called the Satanic Warlock. Now, people say, oh, Dashing Rogue's shilling Satanism. No, I'm not. I'm not. What I'm going to say is that this basically is a um, – it's a book of game for Satanists. Just like they're, the Satanic Witch is a book of game for female witches or female uh, Satanists, uh, this is a book for, for male Satanists, and it's for game. And there are a lot of things that you, can, you yourself can incorporate. So think of it like – so when I'm shilling this, think of it like this. I don't agree with the Soviet ideology, but I can at least agree that the AK-47 is a damn good assault rifle. Think of it like that. So that being said, those are the, the, three, the three books I would recommend you picking up. And again, ladies, you say, well, why do you have to manipulate people? 
Well, because you're you're prone to manipulation and you want to be manipulated. You don't want the truth because the truth of the matter is I'm tougher, stronger, better, faster, stronger. You know, insert, insert Death Punk song here. And you can't handle that. And if we were to go go at it, oh, 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 Needy Hits has something good. I found one on eBay via uh, before Visa stopped accepting payments uh, for even used Roosh V books. Really? So Visa doesn't take payments for any of Roosh's shit? Wow. I'm glad I picked up my copy when I fucking did. Holy shit. That's a banned book. Fuck. I bet you maybe in like 40 years or something like that, it's going to be like worth a billion or something. I don't know. But uh, Bernard Chaplin sent me a copy of uh, the game by Rushvi. I will have to get that. You know, Xerox copy of that shit. Xerox copy of it. He doesn't pick up the freaking, um, uh, what is it? The, um, if he doesn't pick up the fucking uh, copyright for or whatever within a certain amount of time, it goes in the public domain. Keep that in mind. Uh, Mini Hits also says, here comes the POA bashing and the macho macho talk impersonations. There is no POA channels with one-liners. The only ones show, shown are the in-the-field examples. Okay, that's that's good. I'll take a look into that. Keep playing it. Experience is showing me that, that what I'm doing is not working. And that fucking sucks because I think I think it's a damn shame if, um, if the only fucking uh, strategies that work I hate to call them strategies because it's not a fucking strategy. It's just me. But like the only strategies that work are these fucking manipulative, black-pilled, fucking PUA, Anglin tier things. Like, what is the fucking point? What are we even fighting for? It's like I can't even I can't even make a fucking joke without without her perception of me like turning. Well, after the fucking proposal, everything changed after the proposal. Buddy, buddy, I can't make a fucking you, joke. You, and eventually public. you literally pressured the girl into fucking uh, into fucking you. I had the same issue here. You know, I, I I talked about it before. I was interested in this girl. We weren't together, but and she didn't say anything until I I pressed her on it. Now, God, thank God, I didn't go all the way up to fucking Seattle, or I guess in this case, um, uh, Washington, to go fucking meet this chick. I would have, because my idea was go up there and just travel, do it. You know, if worst thing, worst comes to worst, I'll I'll meet fucking John Steele at a bar somewhere, and we'll talk about our fucking troubles. You know. But yeah, but yeah, that's pretty much that. Keep playing. Turning into some fucking rationalization for why I'm like, I'm like some misogynistic PUA guy. And I, I guess one of the reasons that I'm some fucking evil misogynist is that I, I guess I, I won't date women I don't find attractive. Like, I don't know how else to put that. Like, people think that I'm being, some people think that I'm being too superficial or like too focused on looks. Well, I, I date women that I find attractive. Yeah. I mean, and there's I nothing wrong with that. that. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, I hate to be the guy who says this, but we're in a multicultural society. If, you know, we're, we're, we're the meme, we're in a society, guys. And there's nothing wrong with dating women who you find attractive. There's nothing wrong with it. Just like there's nothing wrong with her being a strong, independent woman, even though we know where she's going with that. We all know where that's going to end. It's going to end with cat ladies and fucking kitty litter and wine. But, but we all, but be that as may, let them live their life, let them fuck themselves. But yeah, keep playing. Ten, whatever, whatever you want to fucking say. Um, like I didn't think I was being super picky. I don't, I don't know. Like I, like I said earlier, like I have no idea what's going on in her head, and I, I'm starting to doubt my own fucking perceptions of of, of my own self. <laughs> like I'm not in, um, I'm not doing too well right now. Yeah, it's like you knew that my diet was garbage, and this this was something that I had to gradually work through. Um. Oh, that was one of the concerns. Yeah, her diet was gar his di his diet was garbage. I wonder if he said that her her cooking was shit because that because let's just be frank, there are certain things like let me just say this: you have to learn to lie to people, you have to learn to manipulate people, you have to learn to do it. And again, if you want the truth, you know most people don't want the truth. I'm just gonna say it; they don't want the truth. I want the truth, and and you know the truth is fucking horrifying. It's horror, you know the, the horror, the horror. That is true. That, you know, women are, you know, they're basically automatons. They're, they're just wet, uh, wet, uh, wet wear, as John Collins would say. But in a lot of cases, you know, they're just, again, they're nothing special. I, I you know, people will say, well, why are you treating them like a broodmare? Because you're acting like a broodmare. A lot of your, most of, most of the ways you can deprogram yourself, and not just women, but in, in general, find out the source of where your information comes from. 
Once you find out the source of it, you realize a lot of it's just propaganda. A lot of it's just bullshit. A lot of it's just, you know, rabbit, rabbit, ding, gong, give peace a chance. That's all it is. And you, you'll realize that a lot of, you know, the Nazi ideology is the same thing. I'm not saying that, not, that Nazi ideology is good. I'm just saying that that is what that is. Acknowledge reality first, then you'll be fine. But keep playing. And I still have to gradually work through. You knew that my mom was overbearing. You knew, um, you knew that I sleep in. I have, I have, I'm kind of a night owl. Uh, I, I, uh, I work a late shift, so. And uh, at one point she said, the violin music makes it so much better. I know, and especially the NLP shit, right? My friends were unimpressive to her, um, which one of those friends was Wiley. And, and the funny thing about that is when she met Wiley, uh, when she met Wiley, well, Wiley is extremely successful, makes good money. And, and the guy that we, that he brought along, uh, that, that guy was like a nuclear engineer or some shit. Like, <laughs> These people oh, are boy, impressive, and, and like, my friends are immature. I would be very careful about that. <laughs> oh, now what? You don't want to. You don't want to give Hitler the Adam Waffen. You don't want to give him that. Trust me, you don't want that. But in all honesty, um, I'm in the same boat as him. I hate to be the guy who says this. I'm in my 30s. I haven't dated or even fucking. Every time I've attempted to go after a girl, I'm either going too strong at it, or I'm going to, you know, I'm just not. I'm just not there. So I'm at the point where I'm saying, fuck them. They're the ones with the problem, not me. I don't have to change. They have to change for me. Because we all know that you're going to end as a fucking house wino, and I'm going to end with as a millionaire. So fuck you. And that's what that is. <laughs> oh, no, seriously. You can take, you go always take Aaron Clary's advice. Say, you go to your local church. You'll find a nice girl there. Yeah, but here's the problem with going to your, to your local church. Most of them are taken, and most of them are boring as sawdust. But yeah. Just keep playing. Well, marriage is kind of boring, so just prep preparatory. <laughs> yeah, but even then, if, if I'm just going to, to, to like, like again, I want passion. Most of the people I go to church with, they have nothing. They have no hobbies. They have nothing. It, there's nothing to connect to besides Christ. And I'm not that – as much as I, as a Catholic, I'm supposed to be on fire of the Lord, love your Lord to God your, with all your heart and mind. I can't do it, you know. I always wonder. I've always heard this though, because I've been a art, I've been a Christian and artist, and there has always been a, a my hobby has always been intertwined with uh, intertwined with, with my faith. And so, do people just not have hobbies? Do people not have other interests? You know that, that that's I don't know. I don't know. But even then, like certain hobbies, I can never go back to. I can't go back to fucking. Um, I, I can't go back to Match the Gathering because Match the Gathering has been fucking destroyed. Oh, no. That's the SGWs. And, and even then, you know, I, every other time I, got, I encountered this one guy, he's gay. Gay guy. He's a good guy, but at the same time, he's an SGW. He doesn't know about my fucking politics. And he hangs out with a fucking tranny who I swear to you sounds like she's a fucking anime girl. I <laughs> shit. No, no, you know, it. I said, I said to her. You could be a fucking voice actress, okay? I'm an I'm a man. Oh, okay. Well, an actor. You could be an actor or a thespian. Let's use a thespian. Let's just just let's think of general neutral, gender neutral or whatever. But uh, Beckloff, welcome to the chat. Beckloff says, "What most girls, uh, most church girls don't want uh, to be wise. They want to be mothers. You you're just there to pay the bills and plant the seed." And uh, yeah. That seems to be the case. I mean, I've seen a lot of women who claim to be traditionalists, so to speak, and they just they just want to get knocked up. Uh, alpha needs beta seeds. You know, I, I I'm of the opinion you should be a sigma, but I'm not going to go full Davis or any just yet. I oftentimes see myself whenever I in group dynamics, I see myself like a logistics guy. So I manage logistics. I manage you know people's uh, lives to a certain degree. It's so, um, it's so sad. Like no one wants to be like Gaston and Morticia. Oh no, the uh, no go Morticia and uh, who's the guy from Gomez? Adams? Gomez, Gomez, and Gomez, Gomez. Yes. Yeah, Gomez and Morticia. No one wants to be that. I, I guess. I, I guess not. <laughs> I always thought that that was awesome. I liked Gomez. Gomez was a fucking <laughs> in the in the animated version. Apparently, whenever uh, Morticia said anything French, he go berserk. <laughs> He would lose his mind because of the French. Tish, that's French. Mm, please, let's go. Let's please say some more, some more. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then she, and Morticia would stop and say, "No business now. French talk later." <laughs> French later, right? <laughs> no, but in all honesty, you know, the Adams family. The one thing I like about them is that they were always you know, real. They were real people. 
they were they were brutal. You know, Wednesday Adams was basically a little sociopath, but at the end of the day, she didn't kill anyone that I know of. I don't think she ever killed anybody on that whole show. Did she? I don't know. Uh, well, technically, the, the the Adams family in the movies were a homicidal, which is kind of stupid because that that's where they kind of drew the line because you can't have them be homicidal. You just have to make them be macabre. Macabre. Macabre, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever the word is, because you, you can't have them kill people, otherwise it defeats the purpose of their characters, because otherwise they're just dangerous people. Uh, Media Hits actually asks a really good question. What, wasn't the Adams family of, of Spanish Habsburg lineage? I would put my – that sounds about right. I mean, Gomez is a Spaniard, so, I mean, I myself am a Spaniard. Habsburg – maybe. I don't know. I don't know. That That is interesting. Uh, keep playing. Let's finish the sparker off. And I guess I'm immature. Like I, I don't understand what aspect. Like is it is it my humor? Is it my humor that's? It's like, not you. It's her. It. No, I, I... it will always be her. Never take responsibility. You don't need to change. You just didn't connect. That's all you have to know. Now, yes, there are certain things you personally can improve upon. I personally can kick your ass with my fucking just with my hand behind my back. Okay, if I could do that, then the problem isn't necessarily me. The problem is you. Because you can't defend yourself, Dr. Cox. But, you know, again, uh, again, it's not it's not all his it's not his fault, it's her fault. To me and then my you could luscious say, wife, all sheep skin so pale, eyes so black, and dress cut down to Venezuela. <laughs> and tell us what it is every Adam's hopes for. Darkness, grief, and unspeakable sorrow. I love it when you talk sexy. I like it when she talks dark. I don't know. Dance is in order. I, I have a place. I'm doing all the... all the <laughs> I'm doing the bit. Uh, I guess my humor is immature, but the like... The bit doesn't exist I'm anymore. Have immature. Maracu. Maracu. <laughs> yeah, Moody hits gets he needs coaching from a Rini. Rini will fucking make him do a Sigma male. <laughs> no, but in all honesty, there is no bit. The bit is done. The social contact is pretty much gone. Hey Kaku, how you doing, man? I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome to the show. Like, favor, and subscribe, man. Yeah, welcome back, Kaku. It's been a while. I don't know what you've been doing, but uh, I'd love to hear it on yeah, have you on sometime, man. But we're gonna have Wolf on uh, hopefully next week. I gotta plan that shit ahead and I'm a little bit blitz, but uh, keep playing. Your humor, I'm not allowed. Like, do I want to be the fucking stereotype of the like late? Do, like when I get to that point, do I want to be the fucking stereotype of like the boring late thirties person who just watches Netflix when they get home and has no real interesting opinions? Or like, <laughs> yeah, my my humor is really immature. On some on some level, I am not that mature, but I'm mature. I think where it counts. I, you could debate that. I don't whatever. Well, and with all due like respect, she, uh, uh, she took a lot of candid photos, and she liked it. With all due respect, um, I I'll have to get Beckloff in here because he's he's a man's man, right? He's the everyman, so we'll have to get him in here and ask him what the hell the bit is. I believe the bit is. Like, I always thought the bit was like the social contract of I make money, you know, I go to work, you go in the kitchen, and that's what I'm thinking the bit is. Maybe I'm incorrect. Again, I don't know what the bit is, so I'll have to look that up, and I'll have to have you on at some point to talk about it because I myself see a lot of myself in this young man. I'm not saying that I, I agree with him ideologically. I think he's, I think he's personally a piece of shit, but at the same time, you know, there are certain things that I, I identify with, and maybe I have it wrong because I thought the bit was just, you know, you know, the Norman Rockwell uh, apple pie lifestyle: house, wife, kids, dog, cat. Thought, you know, the, you know the white picket fence. That's what I was thinking. The bit was. Now maybe I'm wrong, and apparently, uh, apparently I don't know what that means. Uh, Beckloff says if he was mature, he wouldn't be crying. On, yeah, he wouldn't be crying on the internet. And guess what? He unlisted it. I think he should have taken the fucking down. Because I'll be frank, if it was taken down, I wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Uh, Media hit says the late 30s with no options watches Netflix. Uh, I uh, no, the late thirties are are badass. Thirties are going to be. Uh, I'm already going to be in my thirties soon. So I'm I'm looking at this thing, thing. How can I better myself as opposed to what he did? My first thought is don't be going for theatricality. Don't do theatricality. Do use deception though. But keep playing. Luke, are you still there, or are you looking at waifu material? Oh, uh, furthermore, he looks like he lacks uh, inner testosterone. Uh, he lacks 
inner testosterone circle. I don't know what a testosterone circle is, but I, I will say this. Um, in, in, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Oh, boy. Luke's messaging me. I think he's messaging me. Uh, men with, with half top sexual market value value in their mid thirties. Yeah, they do. Exactly. So, the, so I don't know what he's bitching about. So, I don't know what he's So about. doing bits is when you do something that is really good, according to Urban Dictionary. I will have to look at the man of the red pill. Let's see. Uh, she said she says yes. No way she did. Yeah. Well done, mate. You have done you have done bits there. All right, the bit. We'll keep pl keep playing it because I'm gonna look this up. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. To analyze people's lifestyle based on the photos that she took of them, and every photo she took of me, I was, I was either staring at a screen, you know, like doing something for college or, or making the merchant minute or uh, checking my phone, or I was looking tired. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I was doing the bit. I was I, I worked full time. Um, I was providing for you. Yeah. Uh, I look tired because I'm providing for you, and I have a little bit of trouble sleeping. And then uh, you get to the issue of, uh, there, was, there was one point where she said, my lifestyle was taking me in the opposite direction of um, my projected goals, and just like to end up on a homestead, like in the woods, away from the, the riots and the cities and all that garbage, you know? And Every I'm, one I'm, of these guys! I can't go buy a house right now. Welcome back off. Every, sorry, yeah. Every one of these guys. Every and it's not just the Wignats, the trad rights, same way. And look, I'm not disparaging you if this is something you want, but every one of these guys is all the same thing. I want to live in a cabin in the woods, a hundred miles away from everybody, with my like trad wife and my kids. Every one of these guys wants the same thing. And the funny thing is, the right is the side that goes on about community all the fucking time, and then they want to live like fucking hermits. You know. I I'm not one of those type of people. I, I actually want to live in a fucking mansion. I want to live in a mansion, and I want to be within the city limits. If Look, if I could live anywhere, I'd live in a nice suburb. Like, if that was just money wasn't an option, just a really nice suburb where the neighbors are nice. You know, you got trick-or-treaters come by on Halloween, that sort of thing. Just a really nice, good old-fashioned suburb. That And that's an actual community. Like, I live in a rural area right now. And, you know, again, the social conservatives, they love to go on about community, but the reality is they're a bunch of fucking cranky rednecks who will pull a shotgun out if you're on their property you know so it's just that's an observation as for doing the bit uh look, yeah luke looked it up on urban dictionary i guess he is kind of correct in using it i always looked at it as that old term for like you know comedians argued they're doing a bit that kind of thing i guess that term has evolved a little bit i don't know i don't understand these young people <laughs> old man beckloff so um but i just this this video was insane. Like this guy, it's just. I haven't watched all of your all of your um, all, all of your content on this, but I really wanted to see more of it because from because I'll just say it. You know, I told I, I told. Um, I'll uh, be honest with you. Towards the end of this video, I sort of take her side. Yeah, to be honest, I think they're both at fault. Again, I take her side a little. When we when we get to it, I'll point it out. But like. He starts telling some stories later on where I'm like, okay, I'm starting to, I'm starting to go on team. What's her face? Yeah, let's let's yeah. What is her face? Because that's that's literally we don't know her what she looks like. So for all I know, she was a ghoul like him. Do not put your fucking love life on the internet. That's the other thing. If you're a content creator, I don't care if you have fucking four people watching your shit or four million. Do not. Put your fucking personal shit on the internet, Luke. You can attest to a couple years ago. I went through some shit. Where, you know, I got home and and had been through some fucking shit, largely due to a woman. And, you know, the show was late and stuff. I told you, I told Pastor Tom, I told Forney. And, you know, there's like three people in my real life that know what the fuck went on with that. I, I didn't fucking tell my audience because none of my audience is business. And your audience doesn't even want to hear it. Okay, they don't want to hear you fucking cry about your fucking bullshit. They don't care. Okay, they, they, nobody cares. So just keep that. There's no reason to put your love life on blast. You know, I watch Angry Video Game Nerd and have basically continuously since 2011. And I think it was like 2016 or 17 when I finally found out he was married and had kids. Because he doesn't put that shit, he doesn't put that shit on blast. 
Yeah, you're, 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 there's supposed to be a separation between you know your professional life or your hobby and in your personal life. There has to be boundaries. <laughs> Even I know that. Granted, I couldn't probably I probably couldn't explain it to you. I just say, oh, that's that's a, that's a given. You know, it's a given. That's I've a- actually had arguments with girls I was dating over these past couple of years where they're like, why don't you put a relationship status on Facebook? And I'm like. I don't know, maybe because I'm constantly poking hornet's nests online and I don't want you to get stung. Mm. That is a very good that let me just say this. I've all oftentimes believed that women like status. That's why I go after the biggest and the best and the best of the best. I don't want you know, I, I, I call me a consumer, I guess, but that's sort of what I've become as a result of of, of a lot of this. And it's not necessarily to to get with not to get to the not again. I don't know what I'm going out. I'm, I, let's just let's just continue with this because I I, I want to get through this because I have other things I want to talk about. And, and I still have another year of school. Like this apartment that I'm in, this was a temporary measure. Like I get that sometimes to, sometimes to go fucking west you have to go east a little bit. Uh, roads are funny. Um, <laughs> I have to I have to be in this apartment until I get all the money saved up and all the schooling done, and then I can devote all my effort to figuring out the homestead thing. And I don't know, but maybe she thought like I'm. Maybe she just lost confidence in my abilities. Thought like I'm. I mean, I'm a fairly smart guy. Uh, but maybe she just didn't think I was competent enough to pull off a homestead or something. Um, I mean, it's not obviously. It's not something you just jump into all at once. It'd be something I would take very gradually. You know, um, I get a house in the woods. You're you awesome with your what's wife the water is. situation. Okay, we have a septic tank. How does that work? How, How does a septic work? tank work? For the land. Do we have to How does much? it work? Do we need he's got it. He's like Rouge. He's got to figure out a wheelbarrow. Once, once he masters the wheelbarrow, then he can. Even I've got I a situation that can manage the upkeep the and you start building on the things that you want and and you do the research gradually and figure figure things out and start having your livestock and your big ass garden and all that to me that kind of seemed like like she, she was just unsatisfied that I didn't have it all right now that yes. there is still work to yes. be done uh, that's the, on point. the project that is no and, and what happened what happened was simple she was dating you and she was into you and when a woman's into you all the stuff about you is awesome and it's cute and it's quirky and it's fun and it's oh so fucking cool and then when she's not into you all the stuff about you is fucking gay and stupid and dumb and immature and blah 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 you know i've you know how many da- women i've dated where when I was dating them, they're like, oh, you, you're like my nerd interests and stuff. It's like, oh, I love the fact that you're like not like other guys and all I can talk about is sports ball and trucks and guitars. You have all these weird, interesting hobbies and interests. And then when you're not dating them, when they're pissed off at you, it's like, you're a fucking man child with your toys and stuff. They, it's just what, it, what however they feel about you is how they feel about you and then they're going to rationalize how the fuck they feel about you okay that's how we're that's how people in general operate but women in particular are pretty fucking big on that so trust me like i trust every, you man everything and look i'm not an expert on women but i clearly know a little bit more than this guy everything they, everything about you is fucking awesome when they're into you and it's fucking terrible when they're not Okay, women love to. They're either all in or they're all out. That's how women generally are with you. They're all hot right? or cold. There's no lukewarm, huh? Like, you know, you, like oh, I, I love this thing about you, and then the moment they're not into you, like oh, that thing about you is so stupid. It's just always like that. So everything, everything about you is wrong when she's not into you, buddy. And he's sitting here and he's letting himself be gaslit. Is this his first relationship? I, I I don't know, but I kind of speculate this is his first serious relationship. At yeah, least. yeah. I'll be frank. Like one of the things that this whole lockdown has put me in a position where I actually want to go out and just get. And I don't care anymore. I think I've survived enough, and I think at this point, you know, I talk about the chick that I was interested in in Washington, but I even I'm like I'm not really concerned about. It. I was more interested in having her as a talking person. She has some of the interesting talking points, but even then. I'm not like losing. I'm like, oh my god! I'm, I'm crying my eyeballs. Oh no! I'm not like that. You know, I, I think I'm more mature than this guy. And even then, I haven't actually got. I like- look. I get it, man. I get it. Women can get under your skin. They can gaslight you. They can do all. Everybody's been made a fool of by a woman. Trust me. I'm not gonna act like I haven't. But like, don't put your shit on the fucking internet. Like, go cry to your buddy because he's your buddy and it's his job to fucking 
humor your bullshit when you're crying over some hoe. And, you know, that's the end of it. Like, you don't fucking go on the internet. I, I, I'm just floored. I'm floored by this Aryan master race motherfucker that's all like, oh, why won't she love me? <laughs> they got the fucking uniforms, but that's about it, huh? <laughs> Fuck. We have to save the white race. Yeah. Well, I, you know, and, and the sad part here is that she probably fucking downloaded this fucking shit. Somebody uh, in the chat at this says, rate. if you like if you like films with subtitles, jazz, or classical music, they might have a hard time attacking those interests as opposed to listening to death metal. Or what. No, 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 no. If you're a guy that you're like, I love jazz and films with subtitles and classical music, when they're dating you, they're like, oh, that's so sophisticated. And the moment they're not dating you, oh, that's so pretentious. Yeah, and whatever it is, they're they're going to... They're going to th- love it when they're dating you. They're going to throw it in your fucking face when they're not. <laughs> the du- hashtag the duality of one man. That's basically what that is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, just, that's how they work. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I fundamentally agree. I've seen this. Full, I've seen this firsthand. You know, you're a dashing rogue and then you're a fucking scoundrel. Let's finish this off, Luke. And building toward the life that I want to live. Yeah, I don't have it all in place yet, but I'm fucking close. And I've got a lot. I've got a lot going for me. And fucking hell, it would be nice to just find a woman who would love me for who I am and embrace the opportunity to grow with me and and not just be like, wow, you're not where you would be if you were 45? Fuck that. And uh, there was like one this weird thing. <laughs> this, this was so laughable to me, but like it just fucking blew my mind that one of her grievances with me amounted to I hike too fast. Here's where I get on Team Ho. Really? Here's the story where I get on Team Ho, and I will explain why after he tells the story. Okay, okay. But this is what I was suddenly like, oh, she's got a point. I I still got it. Of the mountain at sunset. Yeah, I know, I know. Real king shit, right? That's what people were telling me. Oh, that's a real fucking king proposal there. So, So I rushed the hike because... Earlier in the day, I had bought her a shotgun. I mean, it's my shotgun now because I've had to buy it in my name, and, and I'm not fucking getting arrested for a straw purchase. So it's my shotgun now. But I bought her a shotgun um, just before. I that. bought that bitch a shotgun. Bitches love Ooh. shotguns. <laughs> do they? <laughs> they, they? They do. That's, that's... I, I can confirm. Uh. The whole process took a little longer than I wanted it to. Because uh, Don't worry about it. Something got fucked up. And then so, so I had to rush the hike, and I had to get the hike done in, I think, a little over an hour to get there right at sunset. And she wanted, I mean, she could have just fucking spoken up, but she wanted to, like, identify plants and, and enjoy the scenery and all that. And Let I the woman do it. it. it okay, and he also goes on about, like, one time with an ex, he was in a corn maze, and he was all like, oh, he was so goal-focused, he was going to get to the end of the corn maze. So here's what I want you to imagine, chat. Okay. The you're, some, you're some girl, right? You know, put yourself in, you know, so what you got to do is you got to remove reason and accountability. So now you're a girl. Okay. And, um, you know, your boyfriend wants to take you on a hike. And he's already stressed out because he bought this gun and it took longer. So he's already fucking moody. And you're like, oh, I want to look at the wildlife. Like, oh, what's this flower? What's this little lizard on this rock? You want to look at all the fucking dumb, stupid wildlife. And your boyfriend is dragging you up this fucking mountain on this timetable that he has told you nothing about. Like, he's a goddamn drill sergeant, right? Come on, we got to go. We got to go. Like... And, and you're just trying to have a fucking good time, and he's just being this absolute fucking cunt about it, dragging you up this fucking mountain. Right? This is this is where I, I think that the masculinity aspect of this backfired. I, I do believe the guy was way too assertive, way too aggressive with his advance. Maybe well, I'm here's wrong. the thing. Here's the thing. Like, you know what bitches love? What? They Tell like me. fun. They like fun. They don't want to be around Mr. Fucking Timetable and Itinerary all the fucking time. Nobody wants that. People like fun, okay? So when they're trying to have fun and you've got this fucking timetable, and of course he wouldn't tell her because it's a surprise. And he probably didn't even say like, sweetheart, I really want us to get up to the top before sunrise. I have something I need to show you or something. You know, I have a surprise, whatever. Oh, bitches love surprises. That would have gotten her in a fucking mood. But no, he probably didn't say any of that. He was probably just, come on, we got to go, we got to go. And just came off like an obnoxious spur. We gotta get to the chopper, man. And he probably does that kind of shit all the time. Where I, I, he just 
has just has a fucking itinerary on how to you know you know they like you ever, you ever went on vacation with your buddies or something you know yeah, trying to yeah, save I, some money. I, I read this part and, of and the there's the yeah. one guy that's got the fucking itinerary and it's like shut up nerd I right, would try to have a good time yeah just just play it by ear there's there's you ever heard of the term play it by ear you, you, that's and also. Don't pro- don't fucking take your oh I'm good it's real king shit I'm gonna take my girl up to a mountain to propose and all don't pour a whole bo- like don't don't go fucking all out on proposals like that it, it, I know you think it looks like some epic shit in a movie it does but unless you do it absolutely perfectly it looks like try hard bullshit okay don't propose to your woman in front of a bunch of people where she's got to say yes or she looks like a cunt don't do any of that shit okay that's just it's it's a it might work out great, but it's generally a bad idea. Okay, take your woman to a nice dinner, you know, take her home, fucking propose to her. Okay, you know, and frankly, king shit would be more like, sweetie, we need to get married. Let's go fucking elope. That's king shit. Okay, not fucking like, oh, I took you to the top of a, I I dragged you like a drill sergeant up That's to the top of a mountain like a shit, fucking spark. Could we argue that secret king shit? I, oh yeah, I just, Emma shit. I, that's again, shit. again, you know, in a movie where everything works out fucking flawlessly, yeah, that shit looks great. But in real life, no, that comes off as try hard bullshit. You know, it's like the guys that wear the fucking fedoras and shit, and they think they look like some badass from an old movie. No, you look like a try hard fucking douche. Okay, indeed. <laughs> I could see him in the fedora. I could definitely see this guy in a fedora. I would not be I would not be surprised if he owns a Tribly. I I don't own a Tribly, but I own the like the working class workers hat from like the nineteen twenties. You know about that? Like the little uh, I think it's called a, a Baker Boy hat. Oh yeah, I had a couple of those. I no, I, I used to just call them old man hats. I had a bunch of those in my twenties. I just thought it was all ironic. Like yeah, just I'm in my twenties and I'm wearing an old man hat. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, that's what. Well, we're in the twenty twenties, so I mean those might come back. I think the fedora needs to die in the fire, but that's uh, you know. <laughs> Be that as it may. Let's finish this fucking thing. That was one of the big grievances with me. I hike too fast. I am, um, and this is, I would say this is, uh, this is a more general trait of mine uh, that you'll see in other areas because I am very goal oriented. And like with, with my ex before her, I, uh, we went into a corn maze and I was just obsessed with finding a way out of there. And, and I, you know, less, less about enjoying the journey, more about like, I'm going to fucking show you how masculine and awesome I am by getting out of this fucking porn maze. I don't think anybody you know can, I, 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 again, you're, you're not being, you're not on a time schedule, okay? Just have fun. If she starts talking, then turn it on. Then turn on your fucking hyper-masculine, uh, you know, goal-oriented worldview. Or you just turn it on when she's bored. You know, you're 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 on her time. He's Whatever. describing it as hyper masculine, goal goal oriented, but it sounds to me like he probably was more like the fucking really autistic guy in the Big Bang Theory. I could, uh, yeah, I could, I could definitely see that. That's possible. Again, like, we don't know. We're just speculating based on what he's done, and every fucking thing he's doing is wrong. So learn from this guy. Learn from this guy, ladies and gentlemen. People in the chat are like, all the comments are are like sucking his dick and telling him, oh, she's like, first of all, it's his fan base. Second of all, I'm sure he's deleting the comments that are calling him a fag. Like, I'm I'm almost certain there's a lot of comments deleted on this. But yeah, it's mostly his fan base. Like, I, I don't hear a lot of people talking about this. I YouTube just fucking showed it to me randomly. I guess I was subscribed to this guy because... I used to watch his shit back in like 2015. Yeah, same here. And um, so YouTube showed it to me, and then I showed it to Forney because uh, it was fucking hilarious. Um, and I showed it to like my Discord and shit. But I don't think a lot, I don't think this is making a lot of waves. To be fair, aside from like Forney like taking pot shots at him and all, nobody cares about the fucking Fed stuff, guys. Can you check the check the uh, um? Can you check the freaking um uh, the, the comments for a second, real quick, Luke, on this uh, or the newest comments? Let's see, Just go to the newest comments. Go all the way up there. There we go. Let's see if it worked. Did it work? Oh, it didn't refresh just yet. One second ago. Well, I left my own comp- two cents on that. But um, let's see. We'll test. Put that to the test if he actually does delete comments. I have not been. Yeah, just go all the way back there, and we'll go all the way back. And if it's it, if it is, well, actually, yeah, mm, no, it's not there not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Delete this. <laughs> <laughs> One day ago. 
what well, he's he already unlisted it, so he's partially realized, like, okay, this is a bad fucking idea. Yeah, you, you're um, thinking with your heart, not your fucking mind. That's basically what, what this boils down to. Uh, dude, she spilled it out. She wanted a boyfriend to pay her stuff, not a husband. Not even that. I, I also don't think that's the case. I, I really don't. Th- I think that he was taking it too fast. He was too like, hurry up and get married. Hurry up and get married. Hurry up and get out of the cornfield. Hurry up. And get that out might the- have been it because I don't know how long he was dating this chick. Um, but I can imagine, you know, because he's, you know, he's he's in such a hurry to save the white race or whatever other fucking crusades he's got, that you know that could be it. And also, like, she was apparently involved in this fucking circle of idiots. These these you know wignat fed movements. So, I mean, she probably is kind of emotionally unstable. Like, a woman that's willing to fucking marry a, a wignet shit poster is probably not got her fucking head on straight. Well, she's dating de- de- a wignut as opposed to a wignats, and yeah, probably. Either one. I mean, if you're looking to de- marry somebody who's, you know, working for the right stuff dot biz, then yeah, you, you probably don't have your shit together. Oh, uh, he just looks so soy, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, girls just want to have fun. They just really all... Honest to God, like... I, look, I'm an ugly fucking chud, okay? But I've done okay over the years, and it's because I'm fucking fun. All right, I'm fun to be around. I'm fun to hang out with. Like, that goes a long way. All right, like the reason bitches go for the bad boy half the time is because he's exciting. Like the worst thing you can be to a woman is fucking boring. I I think that that's a, well, that, that's actually but one of the things one of my biggest grievances uh, is that to be fun most of the time like hiking is free. Okay, I, I've been told to go hiking and go walking and all this stuff. That's not fun, is it, Beckloff? Going to like the movies is fun. Going to fucking you know to laugh at the fucking bullshit. Uh, crap that's happening at the carnival that's fun you know doing things going places you know stimuli fucking stimuli that's what that is it's dope well, i mean even just even it honest to god like i have a bunch of old video games because i'm a dork yeah um and you know okay yeah they cost money to buy but once you have them you have them you know what i mean yep. um the amount of times i've had girls like you know Oh my god! Can we play some of these old, you know, Genesis games or something? Like, they fucking like that shit because it's it's weird and eclectic and fun, you know. I mean, honestly, there's no better date game than like Mario Kart or Mario Party or fucking Smash Brothers. Like, <laughs> I could, you know, I you had me at Mario Party. I don't know about Smash Brothers, but you no, know. no, I, I, that's that's a good one too. And honestly, you know, it's not too expensive if you have an arcade in your area. Take your girl to a fucking arcade, do some skee ball. Oh, do What's it gonna run you like ten bucks? Div and uh, Busters. I think Div and Busters would probably be the best. Yeah, Div and Busters. Then you then you're also got to get like a, a fucking you know thirty or forty dollar <laughs> meal with it half the time. It's not that um, big of a deal. I mean, that's, that's but, you know, I mean, change. you know, an arcade's pretty cheap. You know, you go in, you get a ten dollar, ten dollars of fucking tokens, play some skee ball or whatever the hell they got. Our arcades even uh, the local art. The thing that passes for our arcade where I live in is basically either very lame ticket games or they feel like larger versions of phone games. Yeah, there's a lot of that. The one in my area is pretty decent. It's got it's got an old Star Trek Voyager game from the fucking late nineties. They refused to get rid of, which is cool, <laughs> but um. They also have uh, some of the Mario Kart arcade machines because the arcades run by Namco are pretty good. And yes, they Namco are. is the one that does the arcade Mario Kart. The arcade Mario Kart's actually a Pac Man in them because, again, it's Namco that developed it. Um, but yeah, the Namco run arcade arcades are still pretty decent. And Dave and Buster's is fine. Um, it just, you know, the food there is a little too pricey. Yeah, uh, he's uh, media hits is saying David Buster's is no first date. A first date, I don't even know. Like, I'm very inexperienced, so I'm trying first, to learn as much as I first can. First date, I would say should be like fucking coffee or some shit like that. Like, honestly, God, I w- first date. First of all, you should be talking to a woman for a while. Um, like, let's say you meet her online or something, for example. Yeah. Um, or, or even if you just know her a little bit from maybe work or wherever you meet her, you should be talking to her for a little bit for a while. But yeah. I, first date, I would go somewhere really casual. Like if you have maybe a nice pizza place in your area, 
um, you know, where you can get like a slice, that kind of stuff. Something small, like a little coffee shop or something. Because, you know, you don't want to you don't want to be throwing down tons of fucking money on a first date, for one thing. Yeah, I, so, I know, get a coffee and sit there and chat for a while. Well, it's also the fact. Well, let me just say this. I mean, I will. I'm personally fine with just throwing money at something, especially if it if it sticks. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to be the guy who throws a hundred bucks and and then gets her makes her feel pressured, right? I'd imagine that. Yeah, would- I'm, don't be buying her steak and lobster on a fucking first date. All right, just don't be doing it. Well, because then you're saying the standards too high, right? Like you're all. It's it's like working, right? If I if I work my ass off. At the first day, first week of my job, and then the first month, and then the first six months, they're going to demand that to be the norm, isn't that right? I'd imagine that'd be right. Yeah. Uh, so, Meaty Hit says, uh, "Was it Meaty Hit? No, it's Kaku who said he got some dark triad personality traits. Uh, that's fine. That's all fine. That's that's all good. I mean, I'm Machiavellian as it can be. The difference here is I don't I don't have to be Machiavellian online because nothing online matters. Keep playing." <laughs> obsessed with finding the way out of there and and i you know less less about enjoying the journey more about like i'm gonna fucking show you how masculine and awesome i am in porn maze i know how retarded that sounds but apparently that's a very masculine uh masculine thing uh to, to be. it's a very artistic thing it yeah. is it is. apparently it didn't work it didn't work just on the goal so yeah i'm focused on goals and apparently that's a fucking bad thing but in my opinion it's the journey that matters comes in, like wouldn't you agree? Would you? Would, could we all agree that the journey is more important than the end of the start? Well, it's certainly in a fucking corn maze where you're paying to have fun. Like, I mean, I mean yeah. Finding Nemo had this story down because one of the focuses of the movie Finding Nemo is parents are so scared to death of protecting their children they don't realize they're watching their children grow up. And so yeah. you gotta enjoy your life once in a while. Life, like, like, uh, well, smell the roses every once in a while. Uh, that that is there you go. Luke got it right on the on the on the money. There you go. You you need the woman to balance out the man. You need the the drive to accomplish the goal to be balanced out by the enjoyment of the journey for its own sake. And that's part of why no part of why I want and need a woman. No 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 no. no. You don't need if you need somebody to balance you out. That by definition that makes you unstable. Okay, like if I like, there is something that that feminists say a lot, and I kind of agree with it on a purely semantic level, but not for the right reasons that they're saying. Women don't need men, but men also don't need women. We want men. We want women. You know, I'm not bi, but uh, you, you know that that's basically the thing. They want it. The question is, what do they want? Now, that's all. To, that is the million dollar question. But you know, again, I mean, yeah, keep going badly um i i think i don't know it's it's so much better when your life is balanced out like that i think but um i guess i guess a lot of these women don't really agree um or um maybe something maybe something's just wrong with me i don't know but i'm really starting to wonder if this is ever going to happen for me because i thought i did i thought i did everything right you know i mean i was i was always trying to do the right thing and that never gets you anywhere in this world you're the people who run this fucking thing Oh yeah, blame the, blame the Jews. Blame the Jews because you couldn't get laid. It, it's, well, those, more, it's those dirty hook nosed bastards, right? Mordecai is too good for this world. Poor, what a <laughs> innocent soul. There's rape kids, and here I am thinking I'm going to get the life I want by trying to be a good person. You know, on some level, I think. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe she wanted to hurt me all along. That's a weird. That's a long troll, though. Like, why would anyone do that? Because you're a hilarious know. Spurg None and you work for the fun stuff Dutch is. I try to be pretty careful about what I'm, uh, the information I'm giving out here because I'm not interested in hurting her and I still care Well, she'll hurt God. you. She'll hurt you, and, buddy. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't want anything bad to happen to her. So I'm just putting this out there just so that you guys know. That's all. Um, my lips are too thin. Can I please get collagen injections? Meg, you don't need to change the way you look. You know, most of the world's problems stem from poor self-image. There we go. <laughs> we'll get him, Scribble. <laughs> there we go. I like the explanation where uh, Hitler's in art school and there's like a time traveling Jew that tries to kill him 
And he finally goes like, that's the fifth time this has happened this week. Something needs to be done about those people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. No, but in all honesty, you know, I, I, I had a lot of similar ideas. And I'm, you know, again, like I've always said, you know, your friends are going to get shot at. And some people can't be saved. Some people are so desperate to become fucking heroes. Let them. And then benefit from their fucking uh, uh, from their mistakes. You, know, you have to profit off of other people's mistakes in some in some way or another. So I, I think that I've learned from like what have you learned, Luke? Have you have you learned anything? I've uh, I've learned my a few well. My experience with women has been very one sided. I still don't understand them. I don't know if I ever will. Yeah, I, I've I've I'm I believe the whole Jordan Peterson: women are chaos and men are order, and so there has to be a little little bit of balance. So, uh, you know, to me, like the whole notion of fun, I don't know what fun is. I, it's a semantic thing. I mean, to, the notion of me cleaning my guns and stuff like that, that's fun to me. The notion of me, uh, you know, going and, and playing some arcade games, I get bored very easily. You know, there's a certain there are certain activities that are more for the individual as opposed to um, the group. And so, like, I, again, a guy for, like myself, I haven't owned a TV and like – T or TV subscription or TV license, whatever it might be, in about since 2012, so about yeah. eight, ten, eight to nine years or so. Yeah, the only information I have is like there's actually a line from a movie, A Journey to the Mysterious Island, with Dwayne the Rock Johnson, and he's trying to give the boy advice because there's you know the kids flirting with the pretty girl, and he says, "Okay, you, you know, normally you go with your gut, when you deal with women, never go with your gut. Do the exact opposite." <laughs> uh, yeah, that that makes sense. That actually makes sense to me. Beckloff, have you learned anything, or do you have anything to share? Or uh, I learned that wig nets are funny. Wait, no, I'm sorry, uh, I already knew that. And, and well, at this rate, um, the only at this rate, the only wig net that's going to get a girlfriend is Murdoch. Murdoch. Uh, are, are they, are they like a terrible place? And you know the problems with race mixing, and you're still going to chance it. Why not get a pure Aryan woman, dude? Honorary. Oh, that oh, is pretty honorary. He could be the guy who says this, but I know that chick in that fucking thing. I, I I don't know her, but she's right next. She's right down the fucking way. Actually, it's kind of weird. No, but I don't know, I'm, man. I don't know. Some of these white women are a fucking mess. I'm starting to be like merch for Revenge of the Sith. Like, the fuck is wrong with white women? Well, they they, they they're sheltered. They're sheltered, and they're they're not suffering any of the consequences. You know, you you drink a bunch of alcohol, you'll get fucking you know skin sores eventually because you're because you know your alcohol content is is destroying your skin. It'll degrade your body, right? None of these women are suffering any consequences, and you could very well argue that feminism and all the you know uh, uh, progressive acti- you know uh, credentials and a bunch of uh, you know, getting women into college and, and discriminating against men has created this world. It has created a world where only forty-year-old guys can get with twenty-year-old girls because the time it takes the men to set up their life is different from the time it takes the women to set up their life because they, everything is handed to them. You know, oh, hang on, hang on. I got Go something ahead. to play real quick. Okay, play it. You're a white girl, and I know it's hard, but you really got to stop banging dogs. <laughs> and start banging. We all know it's a dog you're banging. You're a white girl, and I know it's hard, but you really got to stop banging dogs. <laughs> In this dark year of 2020, <laughs> in the dark year of our of our Lord 2020, I don't know if she's talking about banging dog men or literally dogs. I I, I legitimately don't know if that guy, if the context of that song, so it's kind of spooky to me. But that's an. Well, I, I'm I'm going with the common filth theory. <laughs> Whatever the fuck the common filth theory might be, I need to get oh. off the show at some point. Oh my god! You ever see Whitney Wisconsin online? I've never seen that. <laughs> oh boy, Luke! Oh, oh man! Boy. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh, the horrible. sites we have to show you. So, so this woman right here uh, was uh, she was this is before feminism and, and before and after feminism. She her name is Moldy Locks. As, as you can just Google Moldy. Oh, Locks. I remember her. Yeah. The, you know, there's a before and after of feminism. There's a before, just look at before and after uh, shots, and they exist. You know, there are a lot of women who are damn good looking, and then they get taught and propagandized into yeah. Was Molly Locks into bestiality? 
Um, uh, no, she was into more scatter stuff, if you know my meaning. She was into hair porn, if that makes any sense. Like, she was big into, like... <laughs> oh, God. You just, she just looks like she smells bad. She looks how I feel. That makes any sense. That's why her she name looks like me. she looks like her pussy stinks. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like uh, I don't know. I, 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 again, I think a lot of this boils down to no one suffers the natural consequences of their actions. You know, I suffer the natural consequences. I don't pay my rent. Well, oh wait, no. Trump is actually keeping me afloat. He's keeping a lot of people afloat, and that can't last forever, guys. So you know, you know, do do the deal. Do the bit, you know, pay your rents, pay your taxes, do what you need to do. Everything else within the light of the law, man, is acceptable. Oh, oh, wow. Wendy, Wisconsin has not aged well. Oh, boy. Oh, God. What is that? What is that? Whitney, Wisconsin. Wit. <laughs> He's looking it up now. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. No. No. Oh, God. Oh, God. I showed the one clip to a coworker once where it was just her talking about, like, you know, and to all the haters, what I do is none of your business. And then she just drops what, what it is she does. And then her coworker's like, what the fuck did she just say? Is this the girl who fucks dogs? Yes. I fucked out. <laughs> where I do it is legal. I smooch in the poochin'. Oh God! What I do is none of your business. This I chick looks. She looks like a younger Heath Rohn. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, she does. She really does. Now that you mention it. Oh, oh I wonder if Hadron. I wonder if Hadron has a fucking familiar. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, God damn! <laughs> I fucked out. Get over it. Oh, oh, this. Creature, she you know she's not that half bad. That she's not that bad yeah, looking. I mean, I don't know if she a picture look up. Ugh. Yeah, she looks like somebody from a like a reject from fucking Mean Girls. In that clip. Mm. What the hell is she saying? I can't see that. Yeah. Uh, Beauty and the, the Beast. I yeah. read the comments of my YouTube people say I'm abusing my dog. Uh, yeah, you are. I mean. I gotta ask, is she fucking the dog? A male dog? Is it like heterosexual? Like, now I'm starting to ask questions. That's fucking um, weird. Yeah, uncomfortable questions. Yeah, well, well, let's, let's keep it PG in this, in this month. I fucked out. <laughs> Just, I love the way she threw that out there. Like, from, from that she's like, what I do is none of your business. It doesn't affect you. <laughs> oh, good grief. She had a video talking about uh, spitting or swallowing. Oh, God. Oh God! I don't need to know the details of that. I I I, I don't want to know. I, I I don't. I'm already probably on a hundred watch lists because of a bunch of shit that I believe. Oh God! Uh, let's let's change the subject. Fuck! Let's change the subject. Uh, yes, please. We covered dating. We covered the cheesecake. We, co we covered Jackie versus Marilyn. We covered the Bonnie thing. Um. We 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 we're gonna we have dick envy on here, but uh, what, that was more of a, a feminist thing because women want to be men and men want to be women at this day and age. Uh, oh, here we go, here we go. Since we're on the top of the fucking dogs, we might as well do something that that, that is that uh, is is still in the ballpark, but it's also degeneracy. So, uh, do you know about uh, California legalizing pederasty? Oh yes, oh yes. So let's get our favorite took diversity. Him, took him long enough. What? <laughs> you know, I can't have access to a, a thirty-round magazine or standard-round um, capacity magazines for my AR, but we can legalize gay porn and, and uh, not gay porn, uh, boy lover porn, and all this other weird shit. In any case, you look at these little blips, right? The Epstein thing is one reason. Oh gosh, this pedophile is a little weird. Then you look. At that that show that just went on Netflix, this movie called Cuties, which talked which I will be curious about in three more days. Yeah, see, yeah, exactly. You understand my my take on it, and it's changed the whole thing. Now look how he responds to it. Play it. About how an eleven year old discovers her love of twerking and decides to to break up with her family because her family's too traditional and she wants to go twerk with her other preteen friends. Her family's so a Muslim. Very, very sexualized. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't just get away with saying she's too traditional. 
Traditional means many things. Okay, she's not a Mormon. She's not a fucking Christian. She's not a fucking evangelical. She's not a Catholic. She's not a trad cath. She's not a fucking uh, more. Uh, not what a Mormon. Uh, she's not one of these uh, Amish. She's a goddamn fucking Muslim. Call it what it is. Because I'll tell you, I I'll just say it again. I believe the Cuties movie is nothing more than a fucking exploitation film, and it's gonna have the Muslims be the heroes. I guarantee it. That's my stance on it. I mean, it, it's kind of hard to make yourself a hero when there's a scene where the woman looks at the white girl and says, you are a woman now at the age of nine, implying that she's ready for marriage. Yeah. Well, that's a very Muslim thing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and the difference here is that they're going to be, they're going to basically say we're, we're anti-degeneracy, but it's acceptable when we do it. Yeah, it's Actually, the more I think about this, it sounds like a very tragic story. It's, it yeah. sounds so, like, when I look back on the trailers and the uh, absurdity and the exaggeration of it, of it, it sounds, this is going to be a very tragic movie. Oh, <laughs> yes, it will. Well, I'm going to duck out because yeah. I got some other stuff I got to work right, on tonight. Right. I'll talk to you all later. All right. Wild Bulbasaur fleas. Now, in the state of California, the left wants to legalize pederasty. Yeah. Pederasty, sexual relations between grown men and young boys. They want to legalize it. I know that sounds impossible. Well, yeah. I mean, what about the young well, girls? Be... What about the young girls? What about the jailbait? Oh, they're, well, they're a protected class. You can't have sex with them. Ah. Oh. God, you know, I mean, we could have we could have a, a girl in Wisconsin fuck dogs, but we can't have a, a, a you know a, a guy want to go after that jailbait. One forty-five, and it just passed, by the way. It just it's not even like it was some. Oh yeah, that and that's the thing. It passed, and no one's heard of it. <laughs> yeah, random. You know, you you think that they would have talked about it? Why can't we have a good media that that, that lets this shit you know not fly? You know, it, why can't well, we have a? Although it has been it technically was passed with other legislation, wasn't it? So what they so they just play the whole um, paperclip game where they paperclip a fucking legislation on top of another legislation. So then, let's say you have to you know spend money for the poor, and then automatically as a result of that. Oh yeah, that's what it was for protection of transgender rights or something. And also pederasty. Well, that's part of it too. Yeah. Yeah. A pervert who who just proposed it and it was shot down. The forty member state senate in California by a vote of twenty three to ten just passed SB 145, which was a bill introduced by California State Senator Scott Wiener. <laughs> uh, we have to stop electing people named Wiener. They, they, always, they always live up to the silliness of their name. Scott Wiener is from San Francisco. You'll be surprised. A while ago. SB 145, if a, an adult has gay sex with a minor 14 years or older, and that adult is 10 years, is less than 10 years older than the person, a judge will have the discretion on whether or not to uh, place the individual on. Here he is, Scott Wiener. Wiener, Scott the Wiener Schnitzel. Come here, Schnitzel. Let's look at under registry. So to put that in an example, you have a 23 year old guy who has sex with a 14 year old boy. That is not necessarily a sex crime. That person will not necessarily be put on the sex offender registry. There might be some other smaller punishments, but to actually register as a sex offender. Oh, he looks like he hasn't had a, a drop of testosterone in his body since the last bicentennial. Holy shit. This guy. Well, at least we know what he looks like when September comes or, or November comes. Because I'll <laughs> tell you this. No, 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 no. I'm no, not, I'm I, have not, a, I found a, a, a parade, parade image where he's in it. <laughs> um, Go right ahead. Show it, man. Let's Show see, it. Uh, Replacing now, opening now. No oh boy, he's the guy who legalized knowingly infecting people with AIDS, right? No, is he? Is he? Oh really? boy, there look he is. at all those. Look at all those fucking. Look, hey, there's the bears. You know, they're all. Look at the, this is fucking weird. How does he have abs? How does a little piece of shit like him have abs? Uh, uh, maybe he just doesn't have. I don't know. He has noodle boy arms, but he has fucking arm. He has fucking. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you this though: those men are hardworking men. Those those are the men who actually work. He doesn't work. You could tell which one of them is white collar and which one's not. You know, that's one of the things you could probably see from this. I'm not saying not to go the whole, uh, not to go the whole of uh, you know, well as me hit said Bruno. I'm not going to go whole Bruno. Which by the way, a friend of mine actually pointed out this to me. Speaking of Bruno, my Leonopolis is Bruno, isn't he? The character Bruno, you know, from uh. Was it the Borat guy? The guy, uh, <laughs> he is, he fucking totally is. I, I don't know if like the memes are just becoming reality or what's going on, but 
I have another person I want to talk about because I'm going to talk about legislation because we're at the political part of this show. I sent you a link. Um, keep playing the link, by the way. <clears throat> That's weird. Why, why are we? Why? Why is that a, a bill? That's creepy and perverted and weird and, and obviously deeply wrong. How on earth did that get through the California State Senate? Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how. I'll tell you right now how. One of the ways you do it is you basically have friends who are basically saying that we don't like the radical left. And as a result, we'll stand with you. The people who stand with you are people like Jordan B. Peterson and Camille Paglia, otherwise known as Pederast Paglia, because she's one of the people who pushes that shit as well. You know? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, she does. She she pushes pedophilia. She She's one of these uh, – I think it was um, – I'm, I'm trying to think of, of what it was. It was a YouTube channel. Uh, they were saying per, uh, Camille Paglia explodes, and she does advocate in her books, uh, you know, uh, pedophilia. She advocates boy love. She does. She was part of, I think it was the um, Nambla. They've they quoted her books. They've 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 said that she is a that, she, that she's pro she's pro sexuality totally. You know, mm. she probably would be one of those gals who fucks the dogs. Okay. Uh. So Pederast Paglia can't – I don't trust her. I don't want to be around her. I don't even want to touch her because I'm afraid I'm going to catch something. Uh, Kaku says, the work hard, work hard going into grown men's places, uh, cleaning their pipes. Yes, they do. Uh, Midi Hit uh, – that was, that was Kaku. Uh, Midi Hit says, uh, Milo is a new Bruno. No, Sasha Cara, uh, Sasha Barraconan will always be Bruno. Milo is a completely different animal. Um, so Media Hits also says before that. So I don't think there's really any conspiracy about uh, twerk, twerk cuties uh, other than it's okay to show Muslims as conservatives. I agree. That's something – because, again, it is it, – again, it's this, this false – False dichotomy, this us versus them. It's the Muslims being the, the – the, like we all agree pedophilia is evil, okay? The Muslims basically will, will say it's okay when we do it. But don't you fuck our women. We're all allowed to fuck our, our women and our boys and our little girls and the goats and anything else that is that we feel like it because we're Muslims and we're, we're, we're so holier than thou. Yeah. yeah, I hate them. Keep playing it. Suggests we do. Voting for the party that is now – actively pushing to legalize pederasty. Is that conservative? I guess it's conservative in the sense that it harkens all the way back to ancient Greece, harkens back to, you know, ancient Athens. What do you mean by conservative, like that, you little self fucking idiot? Seriously, if you want to go with conservative, you know, people keep saying, like, what do you mean by liberal? What do you mean by liberal? Well, John Locke, John Stewart, you got yourself, you know, John Stewart Mill, which actually John Stewart Mills. You got yourself Jeremy Bentham. You got yourself fucking the Frankfurt School. They're all liberals. Okay. Now you might say not agree with the Frankfurt School, but you know now you have people like Mr. R Ronald Reagan. You got yourself the paleocons like uh, what was his name? Uh, I'm trying to think of the paleocons. Uh, example of a paleocon. Uh, what the hell's his name? William F. Buckley, I believe. Oh yeah. So, well, yeah, he's a conservative. Define your fucking terms seriously. Okay. Too conservative for me. Okay, if we're just looking at time scales here, I'd rather stick maybe around 1776 is okay in the American tradition. That's some so radical you're stuff. Right and you're not going to hear that. about that and in the mainstream media. White voice so only that is the extent of it. I hope you enjoyed that. No, no, like, 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 like again, I really am sick and tired of the semantic games these people play. But I understand that you have to sell some, some an idea to somebody. The problem here is on the internet. You have people who claim to be conservative, and they absolutely are anything but conservative in the American context. You want to go all the way back to 7076? Okay. You can't own land because you're a fucking uh, colored man. You can't you can't intermarry because that's that's also conservative at the time. And you say, well, the Republicans got away with it. Okay, well, then if you want to go to back when the Republicans started, uh, the conservative party as we know it today, then – that also means you can't have anti-miscegenation laws. You can also have to have a separation of schools and what have you. So how far back do you want to go? Or maybe just stop with the, the, the labels and just tell me what you want to do. Like I oftentimes tell people like the conservatives will never win. Um, like it, they'll never win an election, at least the conservatives like that, like um, that gentleman there, because they keep making the, they keep shooting themselves in the foot simply because the stuff that they say makes no sense. I think it was on uh, PragerU at one point. They said that the greatest the greatest uh, president that ever lived was I think Gar like Garfield because he didn't or it was the guy before Roosevelt because he did absolutely nothing. 
he just sat back and did nothing. And I'm thinking to myself, you're in the most important seat and job in all of all of the world, the history of the world, and your idea of a good day's work is to do nothing. That sounds like corporate well that sounds like welfare to me. Now I don't know about you, but there are a lot of things conservatives can do to fucking fix the country. And just because you act and use legislative power it does not make you a liberal. It doesn't make you a communist, it doesn't make you a whatever you want to call it. It simply means you are not – again, this is where I, I really think that Trump and the Democrats get this. And I say Trump and the Democrats, yes, because the Democrats, they say we're going to give you a million dollars, every one of you. We're going to give you $1,000 every month for the rest of your life. That is something we can actually objectively measure and objectively view. These uh, these conservatives, all they say is work hard. Follow your heart and the money will follow. All these platitudes, okay? Nobody knows what the hell they're talking about. Uh, we're, uh, Wolf and Prepper says, words, what do you what do they even mean? Well, the map is not the territory. I've talked about this before. The map is not the territory. The word is not the thing. So when people talk about hard work, I don't know what the fuck that is. I mean, I know what it personally is, my own personal meaning behind it. But at the same fucking time, I, you know... I don't know what that that I don't know what that looks like. Now you're talking about Mrs. Molbug, a gentle a gentle introduction to Mrs. Molbug. Let's let's hear this. This is from I believe the distributist. Yeah. Oh, I might have to get him on at some point. But would history prove them wrong? Was there a direction in history? The question was strange. There really shouldn't be. I had no reason to expect there would be. But looking backwards across the timeline, I could see a different story forming up. Suppose, for instance, we took one of our standard conservative commenters, a Ben Shapiro, and began to send him back in time in 100-year increments. We could send him back to the year 1918 and introduce him to the right-wingers of that era. Would they consider him right-wing? Almost certainly not. His Semantics, views would probably be on the left wing of the political spectrum during that period. Moreover, if we were to take Ben Shapiro and a right-winger from 1918 and send them back another 100 years, a similar pattern would follow. The right-winger of 1818 would be to the right of the right-winger in 1918, and the right-winger in 1918 would be to the right of Ben Shapiro. And on and on it goes, throughout the period of Enlightenment, throughout the period of the Reformation. The figure whom we take from the past is always to the right, and the figure taken from the future is always to the left. And this pattern would persist even before the French Revolution, even before the terms left wing versus right wing were developed as part of the National Assembly. And why do you think that is? Like, no, legitimate, legitimate question, because there is an occultic element to this. The right and the left have, you know, to, to quote Mr. E, have been an occult element. The, the left has always been destruction and, and chaos, and the right have always been an embodiment of order. You know, chaos is good, and, and even myself, you know, I'm more chaotic than I am good, or or, or than orderly, I should say. I'm, I'm I I am pro chaos. I mean, my fucking girlfriend's a goddamn pirate for fuck's sake. Um, but but uh, let's see. This uh, Robert Con conquest three laws of politics. Everyone is conservative about what they what he knows best. Any organization not explicitly right wing sooner or later will become left wing. Well, that's that's because the left again as chaos. They are entropy, and everything degrades over time. Nothing, you know, entropy. You know, that's what that is. The le the simplest way to explain the behavior of any bureaucratic organization is to assume that it is controlled by a cabal of its en of its enemies. Well, I mean, that's that's I don't know about that, but let's keep moving. Oh, what's our next subject? Uh, oh, yeah, our next subject. Okay, so Kaku says the SGWs is grammar and pathos. Uh, yeah. In fact, honestly, I I was looking into. Um, I gotta get some water real quick. Uh, why? Mainstream conservatives like Ben Shapiro and William F. Buckley have answers to this question that are neat. Their answer is incentives. Bureaucrats are inefficient. I'll be right they back. act we'll like they're in a conspiracy against the institution because they don't have proper market incentives to act correctly. Corporations, they say, by contrast, do have proper market-based monetary incentives. And so their employees, at least, do not act like a conspiracy against the institution itself. But is this explanation true? Certainly, no one ever accuses the military of behaving this way, and it doesn't use market incentives. Furthermore, the mainstream conservatives' assertion that the employees of corporations do not act as a conspiracy against the company is really only true when we look at healthy companies, companies that are solvent, companies that are in company? their period of growth. 
unhealthy corporations in impossible situations where their business model fundamentally fails do start to act just like Robert Conquest described bureaucracies. Their employees begin conspiring against the shareholders. Corporations exist for one reason, to pay off shareholders. They develop around some successful, prosperous business model and expand based on its success. And but the stock along market. the while, as they grow, corporations begin to change. The market shift, the founding leadership leaves and is replaced, and soon the organization has a new set of priorities that are not as strictly focused on shareholder value. And so the- Yeah. I need to get him on. I need to get him on. I mean, as a Catholic, I can just say, hey, I want to have all branch will like you to be on my show if you want. Uh, Wolf One Pepper says, the right also astonishingly lazy and gives up easily. They do. And the reason they give up easily is because I'll just say it. I think a lot of right wingers in this day and age are absolutely mental. And the problem here is they're sane enough. Like they're high, they're not insane. Like the left is insane, but the right is hyper sane. They understand how the game works. They understand that a lot of this SJW shit is insane. Like I've often, I honestly think that every person who's a media celebrity in like the uh, the dark web, whatever it's called, the uh, the intellectual dark web, is basically a leftist. Uh, you know, who has a brain, you know? Uh, but our new subject, for those of you who want who want something completely different, Huxley's wet dream. You know, we, uh, you, th- Luke sent this to me. Uh, and I want, I actually am very happy that people are actually calling this guy out. For those of you, a daily reminder for those of you who need to know, Aldous Huxley was a Fabian socialist. The whole the whole concept of Fabian socialism, and, and you know, to paraphrase what uh, what community to, or, identity. Pause it one, one second. To reiterate what what uh, what what was his name? The uh, distributist was saying, uh, with with everyone, you know, the, as time goes forward, there's more and more uh, people are, are left and left and left and left. The reason behind that is something that Fabian socialists believe. They believe that the notion that of progress is progress towards socialism. They think socialism will be inevitable. They believe that with new inventions and new gizmos and new gadgets and what have you, you're go- eventually going to have um, – you're going to have a, a state where it's going to all be bureaucracy, a bunch of red tape, and no one's going to do anything because all, you know we have to regulate the internet. We have to regulate this. We have to regulate that. We have to regulate you know helicopter flight paths as opposed to you know jet engines and it's the state will just get bigger and bigger and bigger as time goes on so why not just you know go full on socialist and just be done with it you know that's something that uh, huxley believed and huxley is insane Uh, i want people to understand that he's the guy behind mk ultra he's someone you cannot trust keep playing it community identity stability this is the motto for new london the primary setting of aldous huxley's influential novel and peacock's original streaming series brave new world. It's a seductive idea. Don't we all want a society with no conflict and no pain? Don't we all want to know our place in the world and be absolutely certain that we fit in? How nice would it be if we didn't have the stress of making difficult decisions or weighing complicated trade-offs? What if by giving up the power to make our own choices, no one had to worry about poverty, hunger, or disease ever again? Wouldn't we all be very happy? This is the idea behind brave new world. The book, which was one of the most important things I ever read growing up, and the new show from one of my favorite writers, Grant Morrison, poses these questions. Pause it. Go back a bit. Grant Morrison. Mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know who fucking Grant Morrison is, he's that piece of shit who fucking got high in Kathmandu and hallucinated that he got abducted by fucking aliens, and he had a religious experience because of it. He's also a magician, a, a, a magic man. He's like he's just like Grant Moore's, uh, not Grant Morrison, uh, Alan, Moore. Alan Moore. So he's a spiritual leftist. The fact that a spiritual leftist is basically doing the writing for fucking Brave New World is fucking scary. Okay, that that should that that this is what we we send this to Jan Irving and have him take a look at it and realize that shit is getting fucking real now. Uh, play the clip again. I bag on something. Oh, and thanks for performing cellular mitosis and shitting out an even less talented version of yourself. We're all loving the shit out of Grant Morrison's incoherent, self-important uber tripe. You know, the truly meaningful Socratic theses with titles like Dinosaurs versus Aliens, which frankly sounds more like a fight between Alan Moore and his gardener than the title of a fucking graphic novel. That's I never get old. I want him on this show also. I'd, I'd love to have Razor Fist on that fucking poet. Fucking the writer, Grant Morrison, poses these questions and asks us to consider what this kind of existence would be like. Unlike dark dystopian fiction like 1984 or V for Vendetta, where dictatorships are built on fear and violence, Huxley's vision of the future was that of an equally terrifying utopia, a perfect society built around the complete elimination of individuality and personal freedom. 
Today on this series, we're going to take a look at whether or not this kind of world is even possible, and if it is, what it would really cost. Welcome to Out of Frame. When the original book was written in 1932, the world was pretty different than it is today, and the story reflects that. Huxley synthesized a number of then-new concepts into a futuristic society driven by assembly lines and industrial mass production, genetic engineering, Pavlovian conditioning, and... It all should be noted... Oh, I'll stop the right world. there. It all should be noted that the Huxley family was very much involved in eugenics. It all should be noted also that I think uh, the great uh, Huxley's great father, uh, great grandfather, great grandfather, was known as Darwin's bulldog. If you type it in, you know this guy. These guys are evil. They're fucking evil. They're you know people. You know they left this talk about crazy white men who want to control everything. This guy is that crazy white man. He's a legitimately wants to. And you, you know, he, uh, it was between him, like um, a lot of these these science fiction authors at that time, George Orwell, Aldous Huxley, H.G. Wells. They were all part of the Fabian Society. They were part of the the Fabian Socialists. And you, we all know, and not many people know this, but um, you can read a lot of their their books like a like a crazy white man rambling. I mean, the whole notion of uh, of the Eloy and Morlocks, for instance. And um, and I think it's the time machine was basically his per perception of what would happen between the higher class people and the lower class people. So it, it really is the ramblings of a, of white people and, bitching you know, and complaining at and, that time. And of course, all all three of these writers have in common is that all their tra they're all tragic stories of inevitability with no hope of of altercation or being better. Oh yeah, and also you know at the same time you know uh, what was it H.G. Wells he was he was dating Margaret Sanger in his later part of his life. <laughs> Oh, no kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The, these fucking eugenicists, these motherfucking bigots. And yes, they are bigots. There's there, there really is nothing about there's nothing dangerous about them. They're just bigots. Uh, the heroes of the modern left. I know, right? Fucking weird. Uh, Why is a marvel of modern science and people's lives are completely determined by the government from cradle to grave. Babies are no longer born naturally to individual sets of parents. Instead, infants are genetically engineered, hatched, and then sorted into a strict caste system. Alphas are the leadership class, managing and making decisions for... It also should value. be noted... Betas are knowledge... That son of a bitch Huxley also created that, created that uh, book, what was it called, The uh, Perennial Doctrine. So this whole caste system shit, again, like I say, whether it's, you know, the Brahmin, you know, the Supreme Soviet, the Fuhrer, or just some guy who's an intellectual, you always have to... It's always them. You always have to, to bow before Huxley because either he's the Brahmin, just a smart intellectual, or he's the Supreme Soviet. It's always the caste system with these fucking people. Sick of it. Workers like scientists and engineers. Gammas are servants. Deltas and Epsilons do manual labor. Their physiology and intelligence is predetermined, and they're raised by the state to know their place in the social hierarchy. In the sweet little places, discovering the system together. Learning how to fit. Everyone in their place. Everybody happy now. You say like it's a bad thing. Everybody happen now. Make it for granted these children will never know violence, prejudice. Wait for it. <laughs> it Ooh. takes a village, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. The show, well, most of this is the same, but with the added feature of an optic interface that connects every single person in New London to everyone else through some kind of artificial intelligence called Indra. Indra lets citizens communicate with other people, even seeing directly through their eyes, and gives them an augmented reality view of the world around them. You are an essential part of a perfect social body. Everybody in this their place. This was not an original novel, Everybody. so pay attention, yeah, well, and I mean, the, yeah, the, basically the... The, the story great kind of diverges. It's a, it's a little more optimistic because it kind of has plays the whole, like, Jurassic Park, life finds a way narrative. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the sad part here, and this is, you know, you know, the... I wish they would have focused more on the freaking drug aspect because that's really where a lot of this stuff comes from. A lot of it's take the take a medication to uh, to kill your sex drive, take a medication to understand, take a pe a, a pill to to basically to kill to just to kill your, your what makes you human, you know. And it's it's horrible. It's horrible. Like this whole you know this is this is basically what it's like to be in the psych ward practically. Everyone's everyone belongs to each other. You can't tell someone what how you feel. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do that. But take your medication to make to get past the day. It's disgusting. Do you remember the Giver? Uh, I do not remember the Giver. But it's it's another dystopian story with, with kind of like you know people may medicated. But in the movie, they had an interesting moment when uh, the, you know people are expected to have their medication, but then one day this girl just stops and she's like, and she all all of a sudden all her feelings and all her emotions are coming out because you know they dumbed down the masses to make themselves more controllable. And they're like, and she realizes something's been taken. She there's a line where she says, "No, I can't. Something's been taken from us," and she can never go back to what she was before. 
Well, isn't it like the uh... – in, there are many stories of people, you know, not taking the red pill, so to so to speak. Well, not taking a pill in, well, in particular, pill, keeping their blue pill, blue pills in check. They, they yeah, they they stop taking it. One of one such movie is called We Happy. Oh, it's not a movie. It's a game called We Happy Few. Go look up that movie if you or that that game if you want to see what it's like to live in you know nineteen sixties Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. If you want to see another example of this, it's more modern. It has Christian Bale. Uh, look up Equilibrium. You know, you know th- that movie is really badass. Keep playing it. For social theorists as fact. It's all absurd, but if you squint really, really hard, it sort of seems scientific and rational. So that was, and unfortunately still is, enticing for certain types of people. The thinking goes something like this. Our own lives are better when we intelligently plan out what we're doing, right? So why wouldn't the same be true for a whole society? If we just get qualified experts to make all the decisions, we can solve every problem. Never mind the massive difference between planning for yourself and trying to control the lives of... Yeah, the distributors really hit the nail on the head on this when he talks about how what Barack Obama and the whole nerd culture was trying to illustrate. It was going to be this, oh, the smart people are in charge and everything's going to be okay from now on. Yep. You know, it, it just does. it doesn't work, does it? None of it fucking works. It, it's insane. ...of millions of other people who you know nothing about. Many intellectuals like Bertrand Russell and George Bernard Shaw thought that Soviet central planning would result in a kind of advanced social and economic utopia that would produce equality and prosperity for everyone. They were so certain about this that they were completely blind to the horrors of communism in practice. Also, when they talked about creating a better world for everyone, keep in mind that the progressives and socialists of the early 20th century were also frequently supporters of eugenics. To quote George Bernard Shaw... Huxley? Yes. (laughs) Huxley, did you try to kill the black kid again? to live, let them live under decent human conditions. If they are not fit to live, kill them in a decent human way. <laughs> uh, that... Fucking, you, you know, I really, really wish... Yeah, we, yeah, in, in because the here's the thing, here's the thing. If you want to dissect white whiteness, this is whiteness. This is literally... I'm better than you because of my skin tone, and I'm I'm gonna talk down to you and tell you that I'm better than you. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna and you can just never understand you poor little child. In, you poor in, little nigger boy. You in, poor little you little little chinky girl. You poor little kike. It, 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 it's so disrespectful. It really uh, is. Yeah, yeah. The giver also has like the, the way they get rid. Like when people are useless in society, they send them away, and which means they poison them and kill them. Oh. But they don't. They don't see. It because they have no concept of death. They just think, oh, I'm just sending you off. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. It's also worth noting that these same people use the language of science to justify obvious racism. Huxley's description of each cast in Brave New World makes this painfully clear. The lower your status, the darker your skin. (laughs) You little eugenic fuck. Scrubs that part out. The point is, writers like Aldous Huxley, H.G. Wells, Edgar Rice Burroughs, and George Orwell were inventing fictional societies based on what they believed- Most of those motherfuckers were Fabian socialists. Most of those motherfuckers were Fabians. But let's get to let's get to the point where the story really diverges. All right, let's do let's it. See if I can find it. Quote my thesis to me. The problem is people. No matter how perfect the conditions, stability does not cannot hold. It's frustrating. There's a flaw in you humans. No, no. It wants what it shouldn't want. Unhappiness. I have found the state at which you are stable. Living ecosystems where each individual person's decisions, which they make based on their own unique goals, knowledge, resources, and creativity, all play an essential role in determining the outcomes for the economy and culture as a whole. Here it and is. Commended action in this case is for Lenina to take more Soma and go to the pleasure garden for the nightly party and hook up with someone new. Meanwhile, her, her crime is that she's pursuing a monogamous relationship with somebody. Yep, and that's and that destabilizes society, don't you know? It's we self- can't have so trad self- women. They call it selfish. Mm. You can't have a man all to yourself. That's selfish. How dare Bernard you? Bernard gets another assignment. Our residents have been doing the recreation session. Satisfaction levels were quite high until one of the Epsilons, he... He had an accident. How rare. But it wasn't an accident. The Epsilon, one of New London's lower caste. A man who was conditioned from birth to fear curiosity and obey orders from higher caste citizens without question. A man who was genetically engineered for physical labor and low intelligence. A man who wasn't even given a unique name killed himself. This suicide has a profound effect not only on the people who witnessed it, but on another Epsilon connected to the man through Indra. It- now that's an interesting twist. That is interesting. I mean, I mean, here's, I kind of understand what they're getting at with the whole techno- te- technology angle, because the whole purpose of, you know, uh, the Soma is to be, because what, what you, what happens, because Soma is LSD, by the way. I want people to understand this. The Soma is LSD. In our, our world, it's LSD. 
And one of the things that LSD does is it breaks down the ego. Now, people oftentimes get this notion that ego is bad. It can be. But at the same time, ego separates me from Luke. Luke from everybody else. Kaku from Wolfwind Prepper. It separates the two. And without that separation, you don't have the proper boundaries. You don't – there is no you. Th this is the reason why you know they, they like the idea of pushing the drugs on people because if there is no you and everyone belongs to everybody else, then what the hell are you talking about? Just go along with the program. Everyone, they even say in this one point where I think it's uh, the Savage, Sean the Savage, he says, you're on drugs. There you go. That's, that's the answer. Why? What religious experience did, did uh, Grant Morrison have? He's on drugs. That's the answer. No fucking – no question about it. We're not going to get into this whole, oh, well, it's ethereal nonsense and all these ethereal crystals. No, you were fucking high. You were not a fucking objective observer. Shut your mouth, fucking magic man. Also deeply unsettles Bernard, who, in spite of his status, has also always struggled to fit in and find his place. He begins to question why someone would take his own life in a society where everybody is supposedly happy. He Maybe goes he was friend, happy to take his life. But – she doesn't want to hear it. You have tax. Simple as that. This epsilon fell. You jumped. Stop it. Taking a step back for a moment, I think this scene is another really good illustration of the difference between stories like 1984 and Brave New World. In both societies, certain thoughts and feelings are taboo and not allowed. But what makes Huxley's vision more insidious and more realistic than Orwell's is that these taboos are not enforced at gunpoint by an oppressive regime, but by the citizens themselves, simply because they prefer not to think or talk about anything that might make them uncomfortable. Wrong thinking people may eventually get reconditioned by the state, but the primary limit on free thought and speech is the people's own complacency. And since everyone belongs to everyone else, anyone who steps out of line is not just a threat to the world state, but to the fragile emotional security of other individuals. It should also, be stated, even it should also be stated that uh, here's the thing. This is what happens when the scientists and the smart people get in control. There are still people out here who want this. And they're going to say, well, because I'm an authority, I know what's true. And there is a, an example of where, you know, academics will basically circle jerk each other and never, ever, you know, break free from their, their echo chamber. And they won't listen to you unless you're credentialed. So, for example, is milk good? Chat, is milk good? <laughs> is milk good, Luke? It tastes good. I rest my yes. case. I mean, is it good for you? Does it clog your arteries? Is it is, um, is, is like? Do you do you understand what uh, I'm getting at? Every I mean, I know, single like, fucking I, I, thing. Yeah, I that, mean, I've had it ever since I kid. But the more I think about, like, I probably shouldn't. Have, we probably shouldn't have been drinking milk. <laughs> well, even then, what about you know you know certain type of milk is good, certain type of milk is bad. If it's pasteurized, it's good. If it's pasteurized, it's bad. Every like Lewis Black, for all the shit I give him because he's a liberal, right? He had a very good bit about you know about. Um, is milk good or bad or not? And he talked about this guy who 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 understood, yeah, exactly which milk, soy milk. That should be that should absolutely milk. That should be in the fucking yogurt section. All this other shit, right? Everything he, that has has been about his health has changed over his time, lifetime, at least three or four times. Is are eggs good? Eat the eggs. Oh, you eat a lot of eggs. Oh, you know, eggs are bad. Don't eat the eggs. Da, 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 you know. And then he talks about this gentleman who lived to a humble age of 100 and I think uh, 110. Yeah, play Yeah, it. I believe I was uh, in Los Angeles. So they play called it. it soy milk. Because anytime you say soy juice, you actually start to gag. <laughs> and it doesn't belong there because we all... Oh, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't belong. Maybe, maybe I, I want to find the clip. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, because he talks about the guy who, in New York who lived to like 105. And they and he, they asked him, well, oh, what what did you what was your what was your diet like, right? And, and and basically the whole point of it was that he basically ate a bunch of grease and bacon, and he had like a Thunderbird wine and all this like objectively unhealthy crap. Yeah, he, he survived. Yeah. And people were like, like, why don't you eat, why don't you cook it in bacon? He said, like the bacon grease is bacon's too lean, <laughs> right? <laughs> And, and the whole point is, like, this guy knew exactly what his body needed, and he knew exactly what he, he wanted, and, and he was living to 109 on stuff of people with, with fucking rocket fuel, to paraphrase Lewis Black. And that's sort of the issue, you know. Stop making appeals to authority. You enable these fucking central planners, these socialists, and they exist. They're not in power right now, but they will try to get to power. They think that they are some sort of divine will or some shit like that is going to get them into power. 
Don't let them. Every time you listen to them, every time you fucking give them credit, credit, they get more. They they get a bigger ego, and they just love it. Keep playing, Luke. Nobody knows. Nobody knows shit about health. Yeah, I know this because there was an article written a few years ago about a gentleman living in the Bronx, the oldest man living in New York, 115 years old, living by himself, having no health problems, getting around without any trouble whatsoever, mentally clear. And they asked him what his diet was, and he said. But from the ages of 90 to 115, he'd narrowed his diet down. And it now consisted of bread fried in fat pack <laughs> and three gallons of Thunderbird wine a week. <laughs> three gallons. <laughs> hey, buddy, I, I drink a lot of alcohol and I do a lot of weed. Let's see how long I last. <laughs> moments, confusion or pain because they've lived their whole lives in a world without choice, consequence, or meaning. Yeah, Neil Postman's book is I always recommended uh, "Amusing Ourselves to Death." There's an opening line in the in the beginning of par open in opening where he says, "In the Orwell fear that what we hate would ruin us, and Huxley fear what we would love would ruin us." Well, you know, to just be told they both are totalitarian assholes to so go fuck themselves. You can say these things to me because I'm your friend, and I know you don't mean to be destabilizing. Not everyone understands. As a side note, this is what happens when we accept the claim that people have a right to live in a world where no one ever says anything that upsets or offends them. Getting back to the story, Helm Watson, who is the Alpha Plus in charge of entertainment, gives Bernard her table at the Pleasure Garden so he can unwind. While there, he connects with Lenina through their now shared sense of discomfort. As their relationship develops, they take a trip together to the Savage Lands. Imagine a world without Indra's stability and harmony. A primitive land of greed, superstition, and pain. You don't have to imagine. Only an 11 minute rocket from New London, you'll find the Savage Lands. Oh, they've changed it up so it's now all fake. Yeah, you know, again, why the fuck? Like, don't just show the original novel. Show it in its entirely. I don't give a fuck about the racism. We all know Huxley was a fucking eugenicist. Just call the motherfucker out for what he was doing. Although Seriously, it is, it, oh, we don't need Grant Morrison to spice shit up the life. By the way, e EC, um, you've been in this chat before. I like your stuff. I'm making you a mod because I make everybody a mod. Congratulations, kid. You are you are going up in the world. Come and experience the magic. You bring the friends, we've got the fun. In the book, this is basically an Indian reservation. But in the show, it's more like a 21st century small town in America where the residents are made to reenact fake scenes from history for the amusement of the New Londoners. Also, any savages who try to escape will be killed attempting to cross a powerful force field imprisoning them in the region. But well, yeah, that, that, that didn't exist in the original mean? film. That didn't exist. They, I, I don't know what the fuck, they, why they didn't just rebel and take this shit. I don't know. Live there are not free. With weak property rights, their resources controlled by New London, no mobility or opportunities to trade with other parts of the world, the savages are incredibly poor. Their primary source of income is tourism, which just adds insult to injury. Come to think of it, that's exactly like an Indian reservation. <laughs> what do they buy with their money is what I'm wondering about. Let's see what else is there. Oh, I'm trying to find a good scene with the savage uh, here. We they are. want the new thing because with every new thing, there's a chance that it could be the big thing. And bigger, hotter, harder, faster. And we have to give it to them like that, Bernie. Because if we don't, they might realize that the new thing isn't new at all. It's really just the old thing, but more of it. And if it's boring, they will turn it off. They'll be alone oh, with God their thoughts. Oh, God that leads to it. Yeah. Alone with their thoughts. <laughs> How <Okay>. horrifying. <laughs> you do that with your right hand or your left. I'm just wondering, like, like, if you're going to be alone with your thoughts, you might as well get some me time in. We do. If the people oh, of New did. London spent too much time alone with their thoughts, all the soma in the world would not save them from the realization that their lives are not their own, and that nothing they do is allowed to have any actual meaning. That's why John is really such a shock to their system. Mustafa Mons ultimately considers him to be a virus, infecting people with individualist ideas, upsetting social stability. You're beta, right? Of course. Do you ever want to be an alpha? <laughs> He's an alpha. Go pop a pill. <laughs> they all pop a that pill. That made me uncomfortable. Uh, do you know about microdosing, Luke? Oh. Do you know what my? Do you know what microdosing is? What? What is? What is? Uh, it? Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, keep playing it. They are. What's more, with no official status of his own, John traverses between the cast with relative ease, making friends with Deltas and Gammas, like Gary, the servant he's been provided as a guest of New London, and spends much of his time with the Epsilons, including that is Jack Gary. the one who is connected the to man who committed suicide. His influence affects Bernard and Lenina, who begin to have selfish thoughts. You know, what if... Maybe there's a little part of me that's... What? Mine. Don't you want that? Something that's yours? Something that's... It's private and solipsistic, and everyone belongs to everyone else. Don't... Lenina and John begin a secret monogamous affair. Who's everybody, the though? Of New London society. Who is everybody? Does the savage own, own you? 
Like, like, like does, does the unborn own everybody? Like, where's the limit end? So anyway, this is from uh, this is from zmscience.com, and this actually was was back in 2000. Um, this was I heard about this for the first time in like 2016 or so, but this is an updated article. Microdosing LSD may relieve pain. Just a tiny dose of LSD improved tolerance to painful stimuli and reduced subjective experience of pain. Microdosing on, on psychedelics such as LSD and magic mushrooms ha has become quite popular among business prof busy professionals seeking a uh, to reap the psychological and mood enhancing benefits of these drugs minus the heavy tripping uh, involved in, in regular doses. What do they say about S S soma in uh, Brave New World? Oh yeah, that's right. You guys are fucking. You know, you take it a little bit of dosage, you feel good. Taking a lot of dosage, you fucking trip. Same fucking shit. It's the same goddamn ship. <sighs> okay, Irene needs to to make a make a Brave New World short film showing stigmas making their way. Yes, yes, he does. I, I will so I will bankroll that fucking film if he does it. I will fucking do it. And he can he can hold me account. Do it. Play it, Luke. I'm trying to find the one spot. I can't find it. Oh. The, the best line. Oh, here. <laughs> here it is. There's only two levels. The living and the dead. John is, of course, making most of these stories up. But New Londoners love him for it. To them, he's scary and mysterious. A little dangerous. But we don't have any actual... And Lenina, who begin to have... What? Mine. Don't you want that? Something that's yours? Something that's it's private and solipsistic and everyone belongs to everyone else. Don't. Lenina and John begin a secret monogamous affair, but the demands of New London society make their relationship difficult to maintain. For John, the grotesque underbelly of this world is impossible to ignore. And in the end, his influence changes everything. You want to know what to do? I'll tell you what to do. Choose. You want to be happy. Do you want to be free? The irony of all this is that in spite of exchanging their freedom for apparently miraculous standards of living, few people in New London are happy anyway. And deep down, they all know it. It just takes John the Savage to bring it to the surface. You're not f***ing happy. You're on drugs. All <laughs> <laughs> we need to clip that. We need to clip that. Can you clip that, please? I, please wish, clip I, that. I wish I had the uncensored version, but yeah. No, no, no. It, it's better this way. We'll, we'll, I'll find it for you, but just clip it for now. We'll figure that out. You're not happy. You're on drugs. Exactly. You're not tripping. You're just fucking, you're on drugs. <laughs> Into the surface. You're not happy. You're on drugs. There we go. There we go. That's that. Now we're in hell. All right. So let's see what else we got here. Oh, yes. So this is the final, uh, this is really the second half part of the, of, uh, the Portland so you hear about what's happening in Portland, how the Proud Boys are going to go down and basically kick some ass of the Antifa? Oh, that's not going to end well for anybody involved. Oh, no, it's not. So I wanted to clip. There was a clip here, and I sent this to a lot of my friends that are Proud Boys, and, and they all agreed with me. But the problem here is that groupthink will kick in, and then shit will get real. So the link's in the description. This is from the History Channel's uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War documentary. I'd highly recommend it. It's actually one of the real reasons Soldiers why to try to it's happening right now. Like a lot of people, like the Proud Boys are, are you know, they're grunts. And then, you know, and I'm not trying to insult them. They're just average guys. They just want to do something. And they think the idea of, of going in and beating up Antifa and call and staring them down is, is noble. It's stupid because Antifa wants to fucking kill you. You know, they're not going to stand on, on the battlefield and fight. They're not going to do that. What they're going to do is they're going to be the guy who will do hit and run tactics. And again, why are you going to Portland? You don't live in Portland. You're just going to take a, and occupy a, a bunch of space. You're going to expose your men to getting attacked like it's already happened. And for those of you out there who need to know this, they're planning a, a rally. And, and uh, you know, what was it? Joe Biggs from InfoWars, I believe his name is. They were all going out there, and they were going to go fight. And like it says right here, as Antifa and Black Lives Matter thugs assault brave law enforcement officers with impunity and gun down peaceful Trump protesters in the street, the important and feckless Ted Wheeler has not only tired the hands uh, tied the hands of brave men and women of Portland Police Bureau, he has gone as far as as to participate in the violence and anarchy and refused to ask for the National Guard and other federal office offers to help and quell the unrest in Portland. So they're basically going to go up there and they're going to start shit and kick ass. Of didn't, Antifa. Didn't, and remind me, didn't, didn't Sun Tzu once say, never interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake? 
that and also the fact that it's more important to out and think your enemy than out fight them. We all know that the Proud Boys can easily kill Antifa in a fair fight. The problem is Antifa will not fight fair. I mean, and, is there anything in the election or in America now that gives people the idea that there is a such thing as a fair fight? Keep playing the clip. The last four gonna, years. I mean, keep playing the clip. Keep playing the clip. Gives either. That's the, that's why I keep telling people stop doing this traveling tourist shit. You're not doing anything except showing how tough you are, and it's not going to end well for you. It's not going to end well for anybody. But like the guy says, he's fighting the last war. You think you're just going to fight the communists in a, in a fair fight? They're not going to fight fair. Keep playing. Indeed, and this is the problem. You're going to fucking Portland. What are you going to do? Just, just expose your men to it to you know in a city that is owned by the, the the communists own the government, they own the streets, they own everything. You're opening your men up for attack. This is not a good strategy. I mean, this is dumb as Charlottesville, honestly. And and you know I even said if you're going to go and kill the communists and, and like actually go there to kill fucking citizens to kill the communists, I would say you know it's illegal, it's horrible, but guess what? At least it makes sense. At least at the end of the fucking day, it makes sense. Because, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, you're going to do what? Conquest? Like, again, Antifa is playing Conquest large. They're playing. It's not It's not Team Deathmatch. The, the Plowboys are playing Team Deathmatch. They're playing S&D. Search and Destroy. They're not, but the problem is they never destroy anything. And oftentimes, just like in Vietnam, Antifa will pick where and when they will attack the Proud Boys. And oftentimes what they're going to do is they're not going to kill you. They will try, though. They're going to maim and wound you. One gentleman recently, he was going to a Proud Boys uh, a funeral for one of the Trump, to Trump, vote, uh, the Trump supporters who got shot in Portland. He got fucking beaten to, to, to death practically. He's in a coma. He doesn't remember what the fuck happened to him. Oh. Yeah. And this is why you know I keep saying, saying right now, Things are Mac v. Sog. People like us, people like uh, you know, people who are gathering intel and people who are doing what 4chan's doing with the whole doxing and going after Antifa and holding them to account. Those people are the real fucking, the, the real badasses. They're the Mac v. Sog. They're the people who are going behind enemy lines and doing shit that they need to do. Uh, Kaku says, "Hey, have you? Are you familiar with Hardpoint? No, I'm not." Uh, Wolfwind Prepper says, "Uh." A black oh black ops two no black ops cold war have you seen that yet kaku have you seen black ops the cold war trailer uh let me see if i can find it here um media hit says in charlottesville they had to pick jury members for court trials from the township only so the the tiki tortures were screwed from the start exactly you know, a trial of your peers doesn't exist when you are not one of the peers, when you are a foreign force fighting in the war. You know, um, no, and, and in all honesty, I, I'm not familiar with hard point. I'm not sure about that, uh, Kaku. But in reality, again, this is why I keep saying stop trying to fight the war in Portland. Now, if you want to go out to fix objectives, here's an example of a fixed objective you could destroy. But even then, I just need five men, five men and a fucking drone to go after it. Here's an, here it is. This is this is an Antifa encampment. This was, this was discovered by a guy who just you know he's just an average citizen who's using and you know people like myself using OSINT intelligence. Just send in a fucking drone with a, la a blue laser beam and just burn the fucker to the ground. Ooh, it's you don't, this, it's you don't need to judge a jury. You don't need an army. You just need a fucking drone strike, the little bitches. So that's basically one of the Antifa encampments. And, you know, the guy, Trumpet Man, they call him. See a Portland, huh? This is in Portland, yeah. And guess what? They know that they're there. For all we know, that all those encampments are designed specifically to hold and, and house uh, weapons and ammunition. We don't know, but be that as it may, what I would do in this scenario is I would go in the, under the cover of darkness. I'd carry a, a suppressed um, suppressed Ruger Mark Mark uh, three Mark four standard uh, twenty two LR rifle, and I'd go in and or or I would send in a fucking drone and I'd just burn the fuck and just drop fire bombs on them and just burn the fucking place to the ground. And, the sh and and basically make them have to dis disarm and uh, and this stream will get popped. Yes, it will. But I don't care because we're talking about black ops. Wait, Cold oh, War. My, my goodness, a, a gasoline tank just leaked here. I have no idea how that happened. Exactly. And even then, they're not getting their power from normal places. 
Well, like I said, this is this is basically one of their encampments. This is where they're at, and you know they could be they can receive shipments from the dock. I mean, they're right next to the docks, aren't they? They're right next to like I guess it's the ocean or what have you, and you could basically you know. You could very well knock this knock this place off the map if you wanted to. You don't need an army. You just need people who are willing to. Uh, seriously, though, I have some grievances to air about this war. Um, okay, well, you know, you can uh, you can come on if you want. Uh, we've been going for about two hours now. Uh, maybe later. Uh, can you do it later, uh, Wolf? Because I want to have a, t a time when you're just on by yourself, and we can just give you all the whole time to talk, and I can pick your mind and what have you. Would you rather do it now or later? You can do it now if you want, but um, uh, again, an old a game, uh, this war game. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Um, but yeah, <sighs> Kaku, uh, Kaku says happens. Uh, what happens, people in uh, what happens, people in that game mode? Uh, they they become good if if they're familiar with the hard point spawn and move on. One moment. Oh, you want to be on? Okay, we'll let him on. We'll let him on because I have a little. I have nothing else to say except you know, um, the pederasty is a real thing. The pederasty is a real problem, and at the same time, AC ACA five, I believe that it was, where they they take away the civil rights laws. That's that hasn't passed yet, so we're still we're still we're still good on that. Okay, and I again, you know, vote no on. I think it's Proposition sixteen. In California, that's basically saying that we're going to repeal the the 19, 1996 is proposition. Uh, it, it, what it is, according to the Wikipedia, is Proposition sixteen is California's ballot proposal that will appear in November third, uh, twenty twenty, general election, asking California voters to amend the, cost, the Constitution of California to repeal nineteen sixty nine nineteen ninety six is Proposition uh, two two o nine. Proposition two o nine prohibits the state from discriminating against or granting pre preferential treatment to any individual or group on the basis of race, sex, color, ethnicity, national origin, or what have you, for oper for an operation of public employment, mm -hmm. public mm -hmm. education, public contracting. Therefore, Proposition two, uh, two, 209 banned the use of affirmative, use of affirmative action in, in, in California's public sector. So they're basically going to make it so that you could say, because you're white, we don't want to hire you. Uh, because you're black, we don't want to hire you. Because you're this, we don't want to hire you. But yeah, that guy right there, that's Trumpet Man. And they're starting to start shoot slingshots, and that's how you know they're Antifa. Mm -hmm. if, they did, if they literally did nothing and just said, we see you and we're going to move, they would have moved. Now, I would be interested to know who – because, again, that place is abandoned. That parking lot is abandoned. It doesn't exist anymore. What I will say, though – is that these people um, almost certainly are living like a, a warrior's lifestyle. They're nomadic. You have to understand that about Antifa. They're nomadic. They're the type of people who will live in the underworld of of uh, of, of, uh, of uh, Las Vegas. They'll live in like the 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 fucking under sewers and shit if they have to. Okay, these people are uh, again. This is a fixed objective. You can target and attack, but the but the people who the people, the people who want to go and fight the, the old, the last war, who want to go die for their country, let them. I don't think that the Proud Boys should, but they will, and I can't stop them. All I can do is try to assist them in, in, in the endeavors. But yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, Luke, final thoughts? Uh, what else we have? Cover. I couldn't decide if I should go over this, and the reason for it is it's hard to corroborate. The story from the Gateway Pundit Cassandra Fairbanks. Militant leftist attempts to kill conservative activist after memorial for Trump supporter murdered by Portland Antifa. Yeah. That's pretty much it. You know, I mean, there's not much we can do. The uh, Kaku says the left makes make, uh, make, uh, left the left's makeshift fama camps. They're starting to pr propping up every major leftist city. Dude, I will start looking for those. I will start looking for them. Uh, you know, I'm in a leftist city, but I'll tell you this: I haven't seen many of them. I think that what's going to happen is that that everyone that we're going to either light up like a fucking pinball machine here in in California, or nothing's going to happen. Because let's be frank, we're the we're the heart of the leftist cancer. We are here. But in any case, be good to one another, take care of one another. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, saving the West is a side quest. This is the Digital Renegade Podcast, out.